You don't like my disc? You don't like my disc? What's wrong with it? It is beautiful to me. To you, disc is nothing. To us, disc is like my father and mother. Don't mess with my family. If you have any dignity right now, you apologize to the disc. Welcome to the Laserdisc Wolf Pack THXCAV Special Limited Edition Podcast. And yes, I, I will not yell at you again. I swear, everything's cool from here on out. But this next guy, I'm going to pass along to. Uh, I don't know. He looks determined without being ruthless. There's something heroic about him. He doesn't look like an LD collector. He comes across so calm, acts like he has a dream, eyes full of lasers. Ryan Cushing. Sam. You're so hard now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, tonight's podcast is brought to you by Bell Sue Hard and Ale. Yeah. I'll pass it to you. Maxine, the laser disc queen here in the laser disc kimono. I will show the back. That's official. So we're over here doing probably one of the coolest topics that i've ever been a part of yeah so, tonight's gonna crush it's gonna crush uh i'm also tonight sponsored by non-alcoholic rosé for the wino without the wine <laughs> <laughs> i'll pass it to luke <laughs> hello hello everyone um yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing. Nothing. Uh, once again, nothing clever to say. Just uh, happy to be here. Happy to talk about some discs. Excellent. We're sponsored by uh, wine in a coffee cup in my because uh, fuck it. So keeping it classy. Oh yeah, I like it. Yeah, let's do it. Ah oh, man, thanks for giving me a face, Ryan. You're always you're always good about that. Let's talk about some stuff. Yeah, so. Unbelievably, we have not covered the discs of the land of Hong Kong yet. And uh, I've been, you know, into Hong Kong films for quite some time and started collecting them spottily over the, over the years. But I know a couple uh, people that might have a few in their collection. And uh, luckily, they happen to be a part of the Wolf Pack. So Vinny uh, refused to join us because he only likes three Hong Kong films. Um, the killer, so. hard boiled, and the killer. <laughs> yeah, and then I think uh, Chunking Express was his pick. Me. <laughs> his it was like the hard boiled, the killer, Chunking Express, hard boiled, and the killer was his top five. So, mm -hmm. shout out to well, Benny. All right, yeah, Move so on. we got that covered. <laughs> um, but yeah, before we get into like our top five HK films and everything, I we like I, me and Ryan were kind of chatting back and forth about so many of these kind of weird like intricacies and stuff like that. Um, so we'll give you a kind of like a heads up on, on Hong Kong laser discs and, and, and what that all is. But uh, uh, yeah, Hong Kong cinema in general is, well, part of it's like the fault of Brits and their love for tea, because that's how they ended up getting control of Hong Kong in general is the opium wars. Cause they were like, we want tea. And China said, no, uh, you got to pay with gold. And they're like, no, we want to pay with opium. And they're like, no, we got problems with opium. We want to shut that down. And they're like, well, we'll just do it illegally then. <laughs> then a war started. And then all of a sudden they owned Hong Kong and eventually leased it for 99 years. And uh, yeah, so it started this kind of weird 
industry where Shanghai was making the, you know, the good films and then the Cantonese films in Hong Kong were the, the kind of low rent films. And a lot of it was, you know, stuff, a lot of dramas and things from the operas. And then all of a sudden, you know, things started escalating and martial arts started getting involved and yeah, from the seventies on, it really exploded. So uh, interestingly, uh, the stuff kind of I'm going to be showing is more from the, the later boom years from the eighties and the nineties. Cause like that, you know, yeah, yeah. Once Bruce Lee and all that broke, this whole next generation of filmmakers, all a lot of them studied over abroad and then came back and created this new kind of mix of Eastern, like Martin Scorsese and French new wave mixed with HK sensibilities. But um, yeah, it's really interesting as a collector here in the States, because uh, in the sixties, they made this law that you, you know, because it was a British colony, they, you, you had to put English subtitles on all the films supposedly it's just so Britain could keep an eye on what was being talked about in the films. And uh, so at the same time, they're like, oh, well, we can put the Mandarin you know, subtitles on there too. So it kills two birds with one stone. Everybody can get to see this movie. And uh, along the way, like that stuff would just get transferred to video and because they didn't do really high quality transfers from the negatives. They just had whatever, you know, junky old theatrical print kicking around and they would just scan that with the subtitles on it. So almost by accident, it was completely available for Westerners to, I mean, the subtitles are really, really, really bad sometimes. And <laughs> yeah. uh, the scans are also so bad sometimes that the, the white subtitles, if it's on a white background, are just like totally blown out. So, um, or but you cut. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the, that's the thing that's interesting is because at first you're like, right, well, if you do any kind of pan and scan, you're going to just lop off the sides. And I've got like bootlegs of... Um, Oh, it's this movie like yeah, I don't even have like a case for it, but you got Beach of the War Gods. I used to buy tapes from this guy called Video Madman from San Diego. So Luke might know him. Yeah. And um yeah, the old 70s ones, they would just have like just pan and scan and boom, boom. You have to kind of guess what the rest of the dialogue was off the side of the screen. <laughs> um, but yeah, real fascinating because Laserdisc you know, ended up being this big thing because tape in a super uh, humid tropical climate uh, doesn't hold up as well as the disc. So laziness was great for rentals. And so fascinatingly, because we have so many uh, Chinatown uh, communities here in the States, all that stuff was getting imported. And most of it was through this company called Tai Seng, who um, like HK fans have a love hate relationship with, but um, yeah. So they, <laughs> I'd hear about these guys and I, I remember calling them, I was working at the Hartford Insurance Company on my lunch break, and I'm on the phone with Tai saying, like, I hear you have the Hong Kong movies. I want the Hong Kong movies. And nobody in the entire, uh, like, corporation spoke English. And they sent me, like, a, a catalog because they were only used to dealing with, like, video stores because that, that's all they were doing was, like, just distributing Laserdisc for rental. And then so finally they're like, enough of these these weird Americans were calling. They had to hire a dude. Uh, Frank Chen, it's like the the head of like actually distributing to to consumers. So, yeah, it was it was interesting. And then eventually they started like printing their own discs and everything. But, um, but the other interesting is because it was rental market, they would often like split the discs into two parts and videotapes too. So you know, if you want to rent that new Jackie Chan movie, you got to pay for twice as much disc. <laughs> And then, yeah, it even gets confusing too. I've, I've got one I'll show you later where they ended up remarketing that as a single disc, but they just used the old part one jacket and just kind of crossed off the part one and hoped you wouldn't notice. So, uh, but yeah, it's kind of a real fascinating uh, situation. It's it's not for everybody because the, the prints are usually pretty worn and beat, but I think they look kind of cool because it doesn't have all that, um, the noise reduction and all that, that kind of fiddling around. So it looks kind of like a film print. It looks like a grand house, you know? Oh, totally. Yeah. Fair, like, the film quality is as good as what I normally watch. So. <laughs> right. There's, there's a thing. Yeah. You know, you're pretty much primed and ready for this. So <laughs> yeah, I kind of like, it. I, don't, I almost don't want to see, you know, these movies in like super pristine form. I kind of want to feel like I'm on a 42nd street. Yeah. You know, grand yeah. house theater having a double feature. So, um, but I, I don't know. I kind of fell into it a little late. I had heard about John Woo movies and all my friends were like, John Woo's really cool and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then, um, you know, the nineties hit and 
yeah, all these these things started getting distributed a little bit, and then eventually. Harvey Weinstein and, and Dimension Pictures uh, found out about it. And Quentin Tarantino was part of, really part of the big drive to push them to get the films. But they still didn't know what the hell to do with them. And and Jackie Chan's Rumble in the Bronx was a surprise hit, even though it was dubbed and cut to shreds. So Miramax was just buying up rights over here for so much stuff, which was kind of like a blessing and a curse because you could see it. And then you could also see a messed up version and every single trailer, it seemed like had Kung Fu fighting on the soundtrack. And I'm like, Oh, come on, man. <laughs> so a little bit of a love hate relationship there. And then, yeah, now there's all these badass films that officially the, the only U S version you can get is like a, a cheesy one with like all different music and bits cut out. So these lasers are kind of like, you know, yeah, the way to go for a lot of this stuff. And some of the companies don't even exist anymore. So yeah, it was like a wild west, man. Triads were involved in making these movies. They would like threaten actors and hijack productions. And yeah, there was no, there was no law. There was no, um, you know, they had eventually a category three for like the, the nudie movies and stuff, but that wasn't until the late eighties. There was no ratings. It was just a wild west. So insurance. Yeah. Whatever. Just jump on that train. Do what you want. So <laughs> Yeah, it's a fun, uh, it's a fun world. So we're gonna get into some uh, some laser discs here. Did you have anything else to add, Ryan? I was gonna say some of the early Tai Sang you could actually see they were just the Hong Kong release with like their own cutout Obi like piece of paper. So, yeah, like, you look at LDDB and you see some yeah. that like are identical, and it's like, well, that's because they put in the number from the piece of paper. It, there was no, or they re-released the same thing over and over again. Yeah, they didn't start making their own jackets until like mid-90s. So yeah, they would be like, they'd just be, they'd have these rental discs that were made in Hong Kong or at least you know, made in Japan for Hong Kong. And they'd be like, well, we're just going to sell them. And yeah, just put our little Obi. Yeah. <laughs> the phobia, I call it. It doesn't even cover the full spine either. It's like four fifths. Yeah. I do like all the just, <laughs> stickers like all over everything it's cool. oh yeah tai sang everywhere so and that was i was i was really into in, into the stuff but i was a bad boy because i could the, you know, tower records would have them but they'd be like 80 bucks you know on par with japanese imports and i was like oh man i don't have like 160 dollars to get one jackie chan movie because it's split into <laughs> two and the tapes were just as bad like i was like oh maybe i'll just get tapes from them and they were like way loaded price wise too um so yeah so then all these nerds uh, that ran like anime stores and like shops across the country also were getting into HK films at the same time. So they'd buy the laser discs and they'd just run off copies illegally. Um, and then, yeah, they'd sell them. They'd have books you can get. And yeah, so uh, video madman was, there was a guy in Cambridge mass I used to buy from. Um, and yeah, it was cool. Like I used to split them with a dude at work. We just get like this box of 14 tapes and I'd make copies of them for them. And we'd you know, share the, share the wealth and just have a good time with them. But uh, yeah, and they're also lighter box a lot of times too, probably because I don't know if the theatrical prints were like hard matted or something, but it's kind of cool. Like I, the lighter box bars like move around all the time and stuff, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're never semi bright. Like even yeah. when they're semi bright, they're not. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's a fun world. So yeah, that my goal, kind of goal getting into these in Laserdisc was I had so many of the, those bootleg tapes and I'm like, well, now it's time to finally make good now that I can afford these things and get the original source discs that all those tapes came from. Oh, yeah, it doesn't really help the artists because they don't get that money, but it's all used on the secondary market. But it makes me feel good in my heart. And so, yeah, that's been my goal as I've been trying to hunt these down. And then Ryan over here, uh, he's a bad influence because he'll be like, hey, you should get this disc. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, cool. All right. Yeah. So it's a good so, price. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm branching out a little bit from my goal. I'm close. I'm only about four away, but. Uh, so we're going to do some some top fives, if if everyone's cool with that, uh, HK discs. I, again, we can mix and match. I, th I think uh, Luke was saying you were going to do like HK, some HK pressed discs or HK release discs of Western films to mix I've, it up a little I've bit. Decided, so. I've decided against that. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, but so. I, you know, the more you're talking about uh, Hong Kong action, I feel like I may have, these are, might just be Chinese movies not just hong kong you can go mainland if you want you mix it up yeah 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 i mean yeah okay i'm good i'm ready yeah. we're not snobs yeah we're cool. 
I'm a huge fan. I mean, it, it, if somebody in the comments yeah. wants to be paid for Luke, that's fine. But, it is interesting that this, like this, over here in the states and in the UK too, it does attract a kind of really intense, snobbish fan base. Like it, it's it's interesting to see like what Hong Kong fans liked. A lot of the biggest movies over here really didn't go over well at all in Hong Kong. But it's like, so a lot of the information you get about and the attitudes and like, and us included about to talk about these things, it's all from a very kind of like Western perspective. And there's lots of very, you know, snobby people that, uh, yeah, I got some books for like one guy, just like anytime this one director makes a movie, he just gets all pissed off and yeah, I'm like relax, buddy. These are fun movies. Yeah. Having a good time. I do want to say, I do not feel like I'm an expert in Hong Kong cinema. You know, I, it's so vast and so huge. I mean, oh yeah we're just going to scratch the surface here. Like, yeah, I mean, you know everything about everything. No, but, um, I definitely don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're not definitely not. And that's the thing. It's it, interestingly, they don't do a lot of um, genre films like sci-fi and stuff like that. So it's, it's a lot of, you know, period pieces, folk history and um, the wuxia films with lots, lots of kind of flirt flying around and wire work. And then the, the, the martial arts films and then the combo of the two. And then there's a lot of dramas and, but then there's like comedies, hopping vampire movies. That's like a whole subgenre, which I don't even think I have any hopping vampire movies yet on laser discs. So um, we might see one. Yeah. I, yeah I'm sure Ryan's that. got some of those. We can fix uh, that for you, buddy. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, we're barely going to scratch the surface here. It's just mostly going to be a lot of action stuff. So, but the action's phenomenal. So, well, that's it. And we can revisit this later when we all have, you know, crap tons of hopping vampire movies. So, yes, we can please. revisit this. And a lot of dramas and stuff like that, like uh, Wang Garwei, like has like all these, you know, you know, Chunking Express, obviously, but like, um, was it as tears go by and all these, you know, kind of beautifully yeah, shot movies? It just came out. This came yeah. Out. So, uh, yeah, so you can get into all that. So that's why I was surprised Vinny didn't want to do this because I'm like, yeah, there's some like serious like HK uh, art house cinema that you would be into, but yeah, he's too, he's too cool for us. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to rock my top five. Nothing, uh, nothing too surprising here for uh, HK buffs, probably. I had a hard time with five just because there's so many possibilities it can go with. Um, and I had to go with one Ringo Lam film. And that one is full contact. Uh, Chow Yun Fat playing a a different kind of guy. Like he usually plays these super suave, you know, hitman or, or maybe sometimes a little shabby. But this guy is like a different. He's almost like a bike, a tough biker type bouncer guy. And uh, he, um, you know, unfortunately helps a buddy who has a, a loan shark on his case. And uh, yeah. Then it get, it turns into like a drive situation where his buddy like also has a you know a relative who's got this hot like heist going on. Let's get involved in it, which totally turns into a double cross. And uh, you know his buddy ends up stealing Charlie and Fat's girl, and yeah, he goes to a monastery and decides, yeah, I should get my crap together, have a montage, and get some revenge. Um, crazy like bullet scenes where like it follows the 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 POV of the bullet. Uh, like really, I mean, it's got an over the top bank robbery scene right away where the guy like pulls these, you know, giant hand cannons, essentially automatic uh, cannons out of this back of this car. And it's just it's completely nuts. Uh, it's, it's, you know, a little too Western maybe for a lot of HK fans. It's got like extreme, like get the funk out on the soundtrack and like techno and stuff. So it's not your, you know, your typical HK soundtrack. Um, but yeah, it's really gritty and nasty. Um, yeah. There's some really great lines of dialogue uh, involving crabs. I'll let you fill in the blanks there. But yeah, early on, there's this one scene where it like rolls into this this bar, goes up to like the second level and just like kicks this dude off. And he just like literally just falls off this second floor balcony and lands on his back on the railing below. And you know, it's real. There's no CGI. There's no, they probably just got some poor dude. And you're like, hey, Chai and Fat's going to kick you off this balcony. And I just remember like rewinding that. I'm like, did I see that? What the hell is going on here? Um, yeah, really good, solid actioner and just grimy. It's really gritty. Like the good guys are bad. The bad guys are bad. Yeah, it's nasty. Number four, I had to do one Jet Li movie and this was impossible to kind of pull pull out. But I had to go with my heart and go with Feng Sai Yuck. It's a uh, film about a uh, you know, the lovable folk hero. He's the uh, it's great because he like kind of talks himself up like a like a wrestler. 
you know, you know, talks about he's the most outstanding youth in Canton province. And he goes around like as his own hype man. And his mom, Josephine Xiao, plays her and she's just hilarious. You know, there's a scene early on where she's obsessed with, you know, the Westerners rolling through and their wives have like these beautiful sunglasses. So she decides to like paint her glasses black. And then she's like, shit, nothing can be seen. And, <laughs> and she's just always mad that, you know, yeah, they're getting one upped and like her son loses a contest because he yeah it, it's super crazy but basically there's this this new ruler in town tiger Liu, and he uh, holds a contest uh to uh, win the heart of his daughter in in marriage and um uh, you have to beat his wife at kung fu and th- this is just this amazing set piece where you know the goal is you have to get to the top of this tower and get this little kind of flower basket up there and eventually they decide to run on everybody's heads in the audience. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's just the most gonzo thing. And that's only in the first like 40 minutes, maybe something like that. And then of course, you know, his mom ends up dressing up like a, uh, like a guy and falling in <laughs> the, 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 the other dude's wife falls in love with her and all sorts of hijinks ensue. But yeah, Feng Sayuk, it's so much fun. Yeah. Wow. I love the scene earlier where he runs a race and he runs so fast as his uh, his ponytail like sticks up straight in the air behind him and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> it's just ridiculous good fun. <laughs> uh, number three is Ronnie Yu's classic The Bride with White Hair. Ooh. And uh, this is actually a Tai Sing. This is one of the big American releases they did. Uh, there is, uh, I think May uh, put out a two, two part uh, HK version two, which I need to get. But they actually did a uh, a nice you know gatefold version over here, and they decided to you know work on getting some special features in here. There's a commentary, and uh, yeah, so they they kind of made an effort to be their own criterion essentially. And uh, it's, yeah, it's it's widescreen. Not a lot of the films are, are in you know Panavision or Scope, but uh, some of the bigger ones like this are, and it's just it's gorgeous. It's like a fairy tale and. You know, it just starts off with this, you know, swordsman just sitting lonely on top of this hill where supposedly this flower blooms like once every like millennia and they can, you know, heal his, his, uh, his beloved who he's betrayed. And yeah, he ends up just killing all these dudes. It's great scenes where like, you know, he just kind of flicks his sword and then you wait a minute and that guy's just like chest explodes and just like geyser blood flies around. Um, but yeah, it's got this, you know, love story of him with this, this wolf girl that he remembers from a child. And it's got all these great training sequences, super, super gorgeous, like cinematography and color. And there's this crazy, like Siamese twin, like evil demon, like ruler that the, the bride ends up working for. And yeah, Leslie Chung is the, the main hero. He falls in love with her and uh, it just, yeah. It's just nuts. It's really good stuff. It's got some killer action scenes, but it's like really, really art housey and and beautiful. And uh, number two, I got this from Maxine actually. Thanks, Max. Yay! Um, the unstoppable Jackie Chan in Drunken Master Two. Drunken Master Two just like wrecks my face. And uh, of course, I did also have to get the split. Got to rent both parts with the Tai Seng sticker and. Uh, What's the name? Entertainment Street, if you want to call them. Their number is 573-9772. So let them know that you uh, you have their Drunken Master 2 and you're going to bring it back. But yeah, it's a sequel to uh, Drunken Master from the 70s. Jackie Chan is uh, Wong Fei Hung, who's uh, another folk hero that has been you know, a, a focus of so many movies. And it's just so fun. Uh, his mother is is another ridiculous character and his father is, of course, you know, very stoic and stern and it all just starts with him on a train and they're trying to hide some ginseng they're bringing back because uh, dad is, you know, like it runs in this ap- apothecary and yeah, they're trying to hide the ginseng from the tax officials. Uh, so they swap it with like another package that looks similar. The other package happens to be a jade seal and it gets into the whole thing with English, um, you know, scoundrels kind of stealing um, important artifacts from China and uh, exporting them to museums. And so, yeah, Jackie and all of his, you know, local townsfolk are working for this one factory that is a, you know, it's a front for this smuggling ring. And uh, it's just loaded with comedy and just badass scenes. And it's one of those ones too, where it's not like it's front loaded, where like the coolest scenes happen. And then like the end is a snooze. It has the most amazing final showdown in this factory. And uh, yeah, so he does drunken boxing, which is it's kind of like wacky form of Kung Fu where it looks like you fall down, but then you like keep moving and it's, yeah. But the whole gimmick is that it's not very powerful, except when you're actually drunk. So 
uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but he gets really, really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, yeah, it's got to be. This, this movie was like a neutron bomb. It just exploded the world. The killer, John Woo. Yes. Um, my name is Nina. This is my disc. Um, yeah, it's just unstoppable. Chinyang Fat is yeah, Jeff the killer, and he uh, accidentally blinds uh, Salier's character in a nightclub. She's a singer, and yeah, there's, of course, a triad shootout, and she gets blinded, and he feels very, very bad about it. And uh, yeah, there's so much trauma, and the, you know, of course, the local cop that's hunting him also has a bit of respect for him, and Chai Yan-Fat ends up getting double-crossed by the syndicate he's working for, and uh, yeah, all hell breaks loose, literally, and there's an amazing shootout in a church. Um, this is one of those killer films that, like I said, John Woo was like trained in the West, so this is like a huge homage to uh, La Samurai from Jean-Pierre Melville and, and uh, Mean Streets by Martin Scorsese, but then Martin Scorsese saw it and fell in love with it, and then it influenced him to do stuff in casino and but yeah and of course you got to get the you got to get the criterion oh, trifold cab too if you if you want to get that so there you go that's my number one i know hard boiled is up there but it's got to be the killer what do you got ryan well first off uh my name's actually kevin oh kevin nice to meet you i'm dina if, if you know we were at the same signing i believe yeah we were i remember seeing you so, i saw Thanks. your eyes Thankfully, I did not choose any of those to show in the five because I figured somebody would get killer and it, it's phenomenal, but I wanted to showcase some other stuff. Yep. Uh, so I'll start it off with uh, Zoo, Warriors from the Magic Mountain. Wow. Uh, this is one of those uh, wire films where they're fighting and it's just crazy. That kind of started that whole thing too. That was like ground zero Yeah, and for the 80s movement. Yeah, I want to say that, uh, what's his name's in it, too? Samo is in it, of course. Hell yeah. Samo Hong. He's in everything, but not really. But uh, it basically, there's an old guard protecting the world, and they also kind of hate each other. So, like, the world's slowly sliding down, and they're too busy bickering to work together. So, finally, it like, they basically leave it to, like, a couple of guys who become the new guard to, like, save the world from evil. And it, the whole movie is just insane the the wire sequences are so intense and it's not like it's just like one little thing you're talking like 10 minute scene of wire sequences and it's just phenomenal and the the, the transfer is not bad the subtitles are good because it's a it's a newer ticing uh yeah that's a ticing us release right yeah yeah I don't, yeah I don't know if it has a year on it but uh just really really cool so uh that was that was definitely worth finding check it out find it whatever it's cheap yeah uh number four nice high risk. jet yeah so we've got jet lee who's this badass military guy the opening sequence his wife and kid get blown up by a terrorist so he like quits everything and decides to become a bodyguard for his famous actor cousin who's kind of a fuck off he's like jackie a, chung yeah he's a he's a martial arts star who's kind of you know gets drunk and parties all the time and isn't really focused on training or anything else. And they end up getting stuck in this high rise and held hostage and kind of feel like there's a little bit of diehard in there, but uh, explosions, fighting gun sequences, fights. It's just, just great and great ending and uh, top to bottom, just an enjoyable film. So check this one out if you can find it. Is that two parts or one? It is one part. Excellent. Yeah. I didn't have any two-parters on my top five. Nice. I just skipped multiple discs. Too much watching. <laughs> uh, again. More Jet. More Jet. Black Mask. Ooh. So he he's part of a group of super soldiers where they remove their nerves so they can't feel anything. Which okay. I, I don't know how you do that, but who, who cares? <laughs> but uh, Science. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so he's like hiding and just, you know, living his life as a librarian, trying to stay out of things. And he gets pulled back in by his friend who's a cop to stop these people from taking over all the guns. And it's, again, a lot of fighting, shooting, just nonstop action sequences. Plus, you know, he kind of, you know, gets a girl along the way because why, I mean, obviously, if, you're, yeah. Yeah, if you can't feel anything, you might as well feel something, right? Yeah. That's how that works. Yeah, it's the post quote. 
Oh. Yeah, it's on the back here. I'll show you. That's yeah. that's what that says. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even gives your name, Ryan Cushing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Credit where credits due. Uh, number two, writing wrong. Uh, I was wondering when uh, Rothrock would show up. Oh yeah, Rothrock is going to make an appearance for sure. So basically, you've got this guy who's pretty much badass, and it's mostly about him. And she doesn't, you know, she's there. She's kind of trying to, like a cop trying to, you know, figure out what's going on. But he's just out for revenge. And he's trying to take down the bad guys. And they, uh, I, I don't want to spoil it, but the, the ending is kind of a, kind of not what you expected from the movie. Um, and then there is an alternate U.S. American ending. So you can find this. It's got both endings. Um, nice. cool. The other cool thing about this is it actually features commentary from Rothrock on it. Oh, um, nice. Um, there's a mispressed version that has like some audio issues, and then there's the fixed version. And you can tell the difference because the sticker is actually like just stuck on because oh, yeah. wouldn't it be? But really, really tight action sequences again. Uh, Rothrock takes down this other chick, and they just beat the hell out of each other. So. Just, yeah, you yeah. you and Bo is like a badass too. I mean, he was part of that whole like old school like Sam Hung Jackie Chan click. Yeah, oh yeah, from he, the opera school. Yep. And, and no, no offense to Rothrock, but like he's like a level just way above her, even when she's like peaking in that film. Oh yeah, he kicks ass. He's just so <laughs> fluid and yeah. fast, and it's just impressive. And there, there's one bad guy who's like uh, in it, and he, they they fight, and it's just phenomenal. So just you gotta check it out. And then number one. <laughs> nice. What? I see a category three triangle. The so Holy sweet. Virgin versus the Evil Dead. Not no. to be confused with Bruce Campbell's movie. No. And so basically there's this like moon demon that's killing <laughs> virgins. And uh, this whole action sequence ensues. Uh, they end up leaving the country to go like defeat this before he takes over the world this moon thing and oh my god it is just non-stop fighting and tits everywhere and hey. just <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's I, Donnie I, Yen right it's the Iron yes. Monkey. Yeah. yeah and then the other cool thing about this is, is they filmed two versions the category three version where like the opening and like the last 12 minutes there's just naked women everywhere yep and like the friendly hey let's sell this to uh, I have no idea. Like, England, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And like, it's the same movie, but they've cut out all of that. So, yeah. just, just ridiculous, top to bottom, like batshit crazy plot, fighting, blood, killing, doesn't yeah. matter. Just wow. awesome. So, they didn't, they didn't cut it out. They like, ha they shot the scene, but they're wearing bikinis, right? Like, yeah, like it's, it's yeah. basically the same scene, <laughs> but it's completely different. Like, shot a second time. <laughs> yeah and th the fact that they did that I don't, I don't even know like that's i guess good like planning maybe but i don't know how much more you make doing that no maybe maybe it's sold well in the uk all right maxine what do you have all right so this was super exciting because these are a lot of films where i've never really like dove into this whole topic and like i'm obsessed i love this so much this was so enjoyable like i want to watch everything like from this type of genre i just love yeah. that. it was so right up my alley best assignment ever oh, it really it really was like wow thank you so much like i was like so <laughs> stoked on this so um okay number five Ooh. is black sheep affair and i took nice. notes i took notes so we were okay here because a lot of these obviously there's a lot to keep track of oh yeah um so okay standout scenes for this one um this is the lead character guy this is his girl from back home mm -hmm. and they're this also has like um chinese language and then it has some english and he he's like a mercenary and he's like trying not to be a mercenary, but then he ends up having to be a mercenary to like collect this guy. You got to be conflicted, like or else it's no fun. Like they're in Lavernia. Is that real? That's hmm. where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and his name is Dong, of course. Yeah. So Dong like bursts into song and choreographed dance fighting. Hell yeah. 
friend just in the middle of film. It was incredible. Um, there were lots of flashback scenes to like the love interest with like mm. kid actors and it made no sense, but it was beautiful. And oh, this airport scene, there was an airport scene and everyone just looks like regular people just going like into the airport. And then out of nowhere, every single person has a freaking gun. And these are not <laughs> guns that you could have just hid like in your purse. This is just like straight up full on like humongous machine guns, like ba-bam, everyone's dead. Everyone in that place is dead. And then they capture oh, this guy to take him back because he's trying to like do some like weird, like he like uses a chain to like carve this like Jesus painting into a wall. I was like, <laughs> it, was, nice. it was wacky. And I was just like, I love this. Oh, the ending, the ending was, oh no. Okay, let me go back a little bit. So right. there's a scene where it's like an insane chase scene where they're in, this group is like chasing against this group. And, but he's in the car with them. So it's like his bodyguard guys and they're all in their van and the, they're in a van with him because he's been captured and they're trying to catch him. Yep. So the van, they're like in this alley and they're like stuck on like all four ends. And so they're trying to like get, so this, and, and everyone's shooting rocket launchers at them. <laughs> of course. Everyone is shooting rocket launchers. <laughs> so it's like, they're trying to avoid like the, the windshield's been kicked out at this point. And then a rocket launcher is coming straight through the van that these guys are in with him. And he's like, oh we're gonna explode and then he's like no we're not and he just bumps the freaking door of the back of the van open and the thing flies out the back of the whole van and blows up the car behind them it was of incredible. course it was incredible so this was just like freaking i mean it was kind of like non-stop and there was like it had just enough english in it to where it was a good starter one like this is one of the first ones that i watched so i was like okay it's kind of like dip a toe there's a lot of subtitles but i was like kind of getting into the mode of reading a lot of it but there oh, yeah. was out of English and it has obviously both languages in subtitles so there's flip-flopping but he's the one mainly who speaks English but I mean not a happy ending I won't spoil it but mm. it wasn't a happy ending and that also threw me for a loop it was just this very just heroic just like coming out with all the explosions behind him and it was just like why couldn't have that ended better <laughs> but yeah I mean overall freaking there was a lot of comedy there was a lot of like I I wrote down in here that um, basically Pun, who's the love interest, is super naive and dumb. I wrote that down. <laughs> Excellent. And, and I, I just, yeah, weirdly has a Power Rangers feel in how they fight. All right. I wrote that, so <laughs> not everyone needed to know that. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so now we're on number four here. Okay, so that would be Full Throttle. Oh, nice. This is all about motorcycles lots and lots of motorcycles um, and it almost feels like a fast and furious like almost like that kind of tokyo drift vibe in the four you yeah. know like they love the road like it's all about the road like feel the road you yeah. know it's like that whole vibe um and oh okay there's a quote it's a good quote right. life is like a tire you never know where it will take you but don't let yourself be like a tire be the driver nice so yeah, lots of bike racing. Oh, great, great, um, like, bike scenes where you're looking at the road with guitar solos. So just, like, this is, like, one that you could probably, like, put on in the background and, like, really actually enjoy at the same time. The, the plot of it was, like, it was good. Um, the lead is apparently a pop idol. Is that Andy um, Lau? It is Andy Lau. Nice. And um, basically, he's a infamous bike racer he's the fastest he goes to the bar and he has a little number one that's just for him to park at and then his best buddy gets <laughs> to park at number two and like he's he's kind of like washed up a little bit he's never gone to like the big big race and like won it and like he's fighting with his dad and his dad owns like a bike company and it's just like it's like a really good kind of dramatic but lots of like racing and action and like i mean it's like he he gets fucked up. like he falls and gets he drives over a tin can and almost dies it was <laughs> wild like and then it's just like a lot of like him just recovering and like his girls like taking care of it and there's like a little drama in there yeah but you got to recover yeah and then he comes back and he's like freaking terrified and i was like this almost feels like something else i've seen but like hmm. you know where you, you can't get back on the horse you know like yeah. but he's he kind of is like um the the other kind of like friend and like adversary character his name is David and he really reminds me of like 
the guy from kickboxer like just his whole demeanor reminds me of the guy from kickboxer nice. but just overall it was like really it was enjoyable but like it had a totally different feel it was just action in the sense that it's like a lot of like racing action rather than like kick butt action so yeah. it's kind of a different, different tone which i enjoyed yeah even some of these action movies i have are like 90 percent drama 10 percent ass kicking but yeah 10 yeah, exactly. percent is so good yeah okay all right what Ooh. we got this one this one Oh, new legend heart. of Shaolin, baby. Stole my heart. I was obsessed after watching this. Menting. Menting. You ate Menting. my chicken ass is my you favorite quote. My I like chicken ass, but not this kind of kid's ass. Like, <laughs> I think that's where I got my name Master Hunk from. I was going to tell oh you my Master God. Hunk story. This is the best shit I've ever seen. It was Hell so yeah. Start to finish. Start to finish. The extending like, like metal pole that just like skewers oh my God. people i loved it and then he's like and it's he's like, like a buzzsaw <laughs> and it's like, ruins this guy ruins his life oh my god it goes okay. through a log <laughs> lots of notes i mean it's just like x-men claws in the beginning like yeah. it was just like um oh and then um oh i'll have to mention her yeah she, i'm ripping a lot of the um oh you got okay oh, yeah. i love it <laughs> I, yeah it's the two-parter part yep two-parter i mean just the backs of these like this is like this is how good it is the cover it definitely tells you how good it is i love they have this the censorship thing like right on the back like the whole form oh freaking just i loved this so much it had a happy ending where they literally rode off into the sunset i loved that and just freaking the kid gang man ting was my favorite character he was just like he when they did this they had this battle scene where it was just like they were just doing the exact same moves at the same time and it was just so incredible. good it was incredible <laughs> highly highly recommended yeah super good and it's gently i mean yep. and then the the love interest uh comes into this next one that's my number two uh -oh. which is oh let me get my notes there because this one was, whew, this was super good street angels Ooh. This yeah. so the love interest in um Le new uh legend of New Shellin is is um ten Tun Yen in this movie. So this was incredible. It gave me like bright lights, big city, Ooh, very okay. neon drenched, just like noir-ish kind of vibes. And I just I loved it. The music was great. I freaking loved it. This is nice. yeah, this totally kind of gives that vibe. So she has this boyfriend, his name is Walkie Pie, and he basically is just a terrible human, and he <laughs> immediately is getting into problems, and she, like, basically saves him from going to jail, and she goes to jail at his place, basically. Hmm. And then when she gets out, she, like, goes back to her parents' house, and then her mom is, like, with this, like, total just loser guy who's, like spent all his money with a loan shark and now he owes him like 300k mm. and it's like ridiculous so she's like okay i guess i'll go like work in a freaking brothel to like pay off my mom's dumb boyfriend's debts like and it's just like wild so this guy this is playboy man his oh, name you is can tell. his name is playboy man like that's not a nickname he's man they call him man they call him playboy man yep. i love it and he works at this place called Number One, um, and that's his club. And it's a ball. They call it a ballroom, which I love. I love that. It's a classy all, club. Yeah, it's very classy. He, he makes it makes a point to talk about how classy his club is too. Nice. And like this other place across the um, across the street, it's called Hero Karaoke, mm -hmm. and they're trying to like battle the business of Number One. <laughs> so they just come up with this like crazy scheme to like get all this media attention over there and then they literally get this guy to throw a, a no joke a freaking bucket of like shit on this guy Ooh. like at the at his like opening of his club and then he's like you can't take it off because it's evidence for court <laughs> like look, gotta wear that <laughs> you gotta wear it all <laughs> till we go to court <laughs> it was just like there's so many crazy things but nice. it was just like it had like highs and lows i mean this is this is ming ming loved her she's so great amy yep that almost looks like the girl from uh sex and zen amy yep oh you know what 
she might be. In or is that Ching Miao? Uh, you know what? Damn we, it. Have to, we have to All investigate right. that. All right. I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I'll add that over. Oh, but you know what? Yeah. Moro, the character Moro in this is mm-hmm. in Sex and Zen. Ah, nice. I we we might that. be hearing more about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but just uh, as a whole, basically, mm-hmm. like, so she, the boyfriend that she, like, went to jail for, he goes to Holland to, like, exile and then basically comes back and then he turns bad and like he's falling in love with her and like she's still like got you know a torch for for and then walkie pie turns full full terrible bad guy and then she like battles him and they like he like fakes his own death like it's just (laughs) like it was there's all these explosions and like it was like very like I wrote Lethal Weapon vibes and Bright Lights Big City soundtrack vibes. Nice. And that she's she's super smart though. I liked her character. She was very smart. And um, oh, there was this scene. They were on a boat, and this guy, his name is Keanu. And then the guy goes, "What kind of name is Keanu?" And then the girl goes, "Keanu Reeves, like in Speed." They freaking nice. shout out speed in this movie. And I immediately it was like, oh my gosh, incredible. Love Damn. it. Absolutely love it. So highly, again, highly recommended this one. There's a lot of crossover characters too. Like if you can if you can see him, that's Walkie Pie. He's in lots of stuff. Oh, it kind of looks like Simon Yam, but um, it's hard to tell. I'll he check. is also in my number one, Uh-oh. which is full contact but simon yam is in full contact yeah he's judge the uh, yes, super flamboyant the yes pie is judge and then okay let me see here i freaking woo, i was waiting full this. contact is amazing so good this <laughs> the stab wounds this was the one where i heard the stab wounds and immediately felt like it was totally like sex and zen oh yeah <laughs> but um Okay, so I was getting like Roadhouse vibes, and mm. then this, then then Judge had those the snake skin like Nick Cage jacket. Hell yeah! In like the first kind of scenes, and he rewears it later too, which I liked. And then this whole freaking like switchblade fight. With yeah. Switchblade with the blade in the rain. It was so like. With the raindrops tinkling on it, yeah. And it washes the blood off. Then yeah, it does. Back for another one, like, <laughs> ooh, it was so good. So good. And then um. Okay, so like you said, the his name is Jeff, which I just love. He's always Jeff, yeah. He's Jeff, and then his friend's name is Sam, and she goes like, and the and the love interest is is Mona, and then this is Judge. We got everybody on the back here. There's Sam. Oh yeah. There's Mona, and this is Virgin. Oh my God, Virgin. She's got some of the best lines. Oh, she's got some great lines. Oh my gosh, but just yeah. Oh my God, you didn't even mention how cute the dog was. Yeah, there's the just so much going. Yeah, the dog. dog. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Oh my god, I was obsessing over the dog. It's just freaking Chung Fat on a freaking motorbike, looking like a Harley guy, yeah. just with this cute little French bulldog in his lap, and he's just got like a fake like couple of fingers on because like yeah. his hand got shot. He got messed up. Yeah. Yeah, but just like the oh man, that bullet shot. Woo, that was so good. I was like yeah. not expecting any of that to be that like. Yeah. I had I had absolutely no expectations. Of, I agree this is kind of that Westerner vibe because yeah. I wasn't sure where it was set fully, like yeah. what city was supposed to be in because it almost could have been like it was like an L.A. Because, yeah, part of it's um, Thailand. I think yeah. some of it's like Bangkok and then it kind of moves around a little bit. Yeah. But it just had the went in the very beginning where they are with the cars and everything, that whole vibe yeah. just felt like they were on like Sunset or Rodeo. It was like mm. you could easily place yeah. that somewhere else. But just the the whole vibe of this was just the acting is incredible and just like oh, yeah. yes i agree he's like perfect in this like i like i like how judge says he's got like charming eyes yeah <laughs> saying that about his like eyes being oh you have such charming eyes yeah <laughs> just uh, uh, so good so good so enjoyable and just absolutely so many more now that i'm going to watch because i'm i'm totally hooked on it and the soundtrack is that's the other thing is they never pay rights for soundtrack stuff so like they had like cool techno and yeah (laughs) get the funk out was i was like damn they're playing with the funk out right now like she's dancing to it i loved that she was a dancer i loved her whole mona's whole vibe was great yep oh that was so good okay i'll pass it to luke (laughs) Luke, what do you got? Oh, it's me. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, the first, 
first disc I have is uh, is the killer. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, get out of here! Wait a minute, this isn't the killer. Get out of here! <laughs> uh, well, all right, so real quick, yeah. the killer is a complete ripoff of this movie by Herman Melville. It's inspired by that and Mean Streets by Martin Scorsese. Give me a break! This movie is so good. Anyway, I. It's the only version that's on Laserdisc. I found it in a in a hard off bin. I was super excited. About I I love I love both films, but the killer is it scratches an itch that the samurai doesn't oh, no. scratch. Yeah. Oh, okay. not a rip off. Next hot take. <laughs> uh, this is my real number one. Actually, I wish it could be my number one, but I. It's Chunking Express. Roll of Thunder. Okay. Uh, yeah. Have you seen it, Sam? Have you seen anybody seen this movie? I've seen. It's been a long time though. Yeah. So I don't I don't like it. I don't like this movie. I'm just gonna <laughs> hot take. I, I don't it was um That's I wish it could be my number one. I wish I could say I, you know, I love this movie, it's great. But uh it's one of those movies where I don't know if you guys have it where you watch it and like it's universally loved mm. and you're like, I don't like this. Like, is something wrong with me? Like it's um it's basically two parts, you know, you have the lady in the blonde wig. And you have this lady working whatever, and you know the the first the first part of the movie with Lady in the Blonde Wig. It's her name is literally Woman in Blonde Wig. Mm. Um, she's kind of doing all this crazy stuff, like put making these these guys from India fake passports and stuff, and illegal activity. Like, okay, cool, I'm I'm with all this. Yeah. And it, then it switches to her, and then they they play the song uh california dreaming maybe 50 times like just non-stop i'm like I, I hate this song i never want to hear this i i don't care about this person uh please stop oh god please stop uh and i, I don't understand why people like it so much um i think maybe because it's the you know they really show the market and the lifestyle of you know wherever they are i'm sure they say yeah, but um whatever i don't care okay next one all right <laughs> His uh, movies are like that, though. I know someone who hates like at least every one of his films, and somebody else who absolutely adores it. So it seems to be a it, thing. Yeah, it's not yeah. just his films. You know, there's other movies. I can't think of one right now, but there's other like universally loved films that I just don't like. You know, mm. for whatever reason, and I I feel like weird about it. And that's definitely on the top. <laughs> of it. All right, next one. So I talked about the killer. So I the killer wife and I saw it in Denver you know, like a print of it and everything. And I was like super excited. Let's go see the killer. And she's like, yeah, let's go before having a kid, you know, just, I was so bored. Like I was, it was one of those times like, oh God, can't, will this stop? Like, uh -uh. just come on, let's get to, get to the end. I want to see whatever. <laughs> I, this one, yeah. this, this is the one for me. Hard boiled. He's a bad, this is it's a good film. It's not as good as the killer, but it's very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. There, the killer is tattooed on my heart, man. Hard okay. boiled is that's cool. It's on my I ass. Respect but that. I do. It's cool. I, yeah. <laughs> hard boiled is my favorite, you know, because it has it's great. It, it starts with a very trope of like the lead guy being a jazz <laughs> jazz he plays yeah. the clarinet or whatever. Yeah, man. You have the awesome intro scene in the the bar slash bird house of some kind where yeah, you get tea, you, you get guns and birds, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just amazing, you know, and then it starts, he slides down the banister, it's yeah. where he has the two guys, it's fucking amazing, but, you know, I watched this in high school, and, you know, at the end, in the hospital, come on, that's fucking dope, yeah. um, and I remember seeing, there's one promo uh, photo with him in, like, a cop uniform, like, holding a baby, you know, that never happens in the movie, he's never he wearing, he does have a baby, but, yeah, he never wore the cop uniform, uniform. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, the, the I love it. And I remember I bought it like off eBay or something. And I remember the guy left the sticker on there that he bought it for like $2 and I bought it from him for like, Oh $2. snap. I'm like, fuck you guy. Like <laughs> you have to rub it in. Rub it. <laughs> um, let's see. So hard boiled. All right. Uh, next one. This one, I actually, I, I want to keep doing some criterions. Mm. Uh, Super cop. This one I actually watched. I'm not a huge Jackie fan, Jackie Chan fan. Not that I don't like him. You know, I, I I haven't watched a bunch of Jackie Chan movies. I remember in the 90s, yeah, Rumble in the Bronx came out and like it was a big deal. Like everyone's yeah. talking about him. Uh, I Super Cop come out after Rumble in the yeah. Bronx. Yeah, yeah. 
So I did watch this one and it's, you know, it's police story three, right? Yeah. Um, it was, it was pretty good until you get to the ending when it's just fucking amazing. You have a train <laughs> and you have him holding onto the helicopter and the helicopter goes into the train and then the motorcycle goes onto the train. Hold on. I've got to... Wait, wait one second. All right, go for it. Super Cop has, there's always like an, an uncle, you know? There's like, a, yes. <laughs> uh, Jackie Chan's always living with his hello. uncle. Or, Renny, can you say hello? hello. Say hey, everybody. Hello. This is Ren, everybody. Hello. Um, that's it. Okay. Um, okay. Give me one second. Can you go out? I'll be in there in a second. All right, sorry, Super Cop. <laughs> the trope of an uncle in the Hong Kong movies, he's always hanging out with the uncle. The, but then the, the best trope that I like is like, he's shooting his gun and then he runs out of bullets. And then what does he do? He throws the gun at the bad guy. I, I, I love that. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, Super Cop, great. Okay, next one. Uh, so when we lived in Denver with my... We lived in there. There's a few movies we saw that just kind of stuck with us. Uh, Turbo Kid. We saw Turbo Kid in the movie theaters. That stuck with us. Uh, Yakuza Apocalypse. That really stuck with us. Mm -hmm. And then we went to uh, the Alamo Draft House and we saw a uh, like a print of this one, and it really it really stayed with us. And I it took me forever to find this laser disc, but I finally got it from Japan. They sent it to me, and I I love it. This is. Hopping Vampire. This is a, ah. a vampire movie. This is Mr. Vampire 2. Okay. Uh, anybody seen any of the Mr. Vampire movies? Nothing? Okay. Just so pieces. Yeah. So the so the mis, the Hopping Vampire is really interesting because, you know, it all, and they don't show it. It shows in this one. This is Mr. Vampire 1. They have this like post it note on their forehead. And as long as it's on their forehead, they stop, they freeze. Mm, yeah. Okay. But you know, if you take it out, you know, they'll they'll come back to life. So there's a good scene, the opening scene in Mr. Vampire 2, where there's like he's fighting two and they only have one post-it. So he's like posting on one buddy, somebody, and then fighting the other person, switching back and forth. But the good one about Mr. Vampire 2 is there's a, a kid vampire, and he like goes and befriends. Like, there's this whole other sequence of him befriending a family. It's it's super weird and nice. it's uh, super great. Uh, I, I I really love this movie, Mr. Vampire 2. Um, I do have Mr. Vampire 1. I've never seen it. I don't, whatever. I, don't. Um, I have multiple, Sam. I've been meaning to send you one. Oh, nice. And, and are those Japanese ones, do they have, um, a lot of times yeah. it's just only like the Cantonese or Mandarin dialogue. Is there subtitles? Right. There yeah. is no yeah. subtitles. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm raw dogging it there. Honestly. All right, respect. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, four. And the last one, uh, so when I think about Hong Kong movies, it's, I think of four, four, you know, you got your John Woo, you've got your, uh, Jackie Chan, you've got your two other things that I can't think of. Another thing I can't think. And then you've got Bruce Lee. Yeah. I was going to say, we got to have an inner dragon. <laughs> yeah. So inner, inner drag. Come on, man. I, this is an American movie, right? He came to America to make this movie. But it's, you know, all based in Hong Kong and yeah. 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 Uh, it, it's, it's. What can I say about Inner Dragon? It's fucking, it's fucking great. Is that a gold rental? It is a rental. This is nice. the, like a very few rental that I'm going to keep. Uh, I sold all of my other ones to Sherman. Nice. But this one I, I really like. Uh, and it's also like one of the last discs I found before I left Japan. So it's got some sentimental value to me. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. Cool jacket. Uh, also, so with, with Hong Kong movies, like the big... The big influences for me was, I, you know, Kill Bill. Like mm -hmm. after watching Kill Bill, I was like, I'm all in, baby. Let's do this. And then, of course, Undercover Brother. <laughs> ah, goes, that's good. He watches. Yeah. He's watching Enter the Dragon, and he's like, Jim Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I wish there was like a nice Black Belt Jones on LD. I don't know if that made it on LD because that's a badass Jim Kelly movie. Yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, and then the other one I've got. Uh, Ha, game of death. Game of death. I got, what is it? Game of death, right? Yeah. Game of death. It's the so one where he's dead. This movie, is, this movie is so crazy because 
I think early on, I saw just the ending alone, you know, mm-hmm. and the ending alone is amazing. Yeah. And I, I love the, the NES game Kung Fu. And it's, yeah. it's the same thing. And if you watch this movie, it's the same fucking sounds as the NES yeah. Kung Fu <laughs> game. Um, but the, you know, this movie is crazy because it has a scene where he gets shot right in the, in yeah. the beginning, but then he really did get shot. Right. He di- he died. So yeah, they ended up kind of using what footage they had shot already, and then kind of came I, up with this whole concept. Yeah, because yeah, he he died of like the an aneurysm or some mysterious circumstances. And right. then, yeah, and then the craziest thing is that there's some cuts or something where they used Bruce Lee's actual funeral. Yeah, in the movie. Because like, yeah, the character gets killed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's very clear that it's not Bruce Lee until the very end where it's like, oh, okay, yes, we're, we're, you know, he's with, he has a helmet on and you see the side of the face, but it's, it's not him. Yeah. There's like one where he's like staring into a mirror and you could tell it's like a cardboard cutout of like Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but just fast forward to the end where he's in, where he fights uh, Kareem Dude, yeah. Jabbar and he's going up to levels and he's wearing the track suit, the Kill Bill, you know, cool track suit. And I love. I was watching it recently. And, uh, yeah, the, there's a opposite tracksuit. There's a guy who's wearing all black and with the yellow stripe. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, that's fucking cool. Um, so I, mean, I also want to talk about like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where they have you know the big controversy with that with Bruce Lee. And when I watched that movie, it was like, well, how you know it's obviously fake history. Yeah. And how you know, what better way to make your character a badass? Than for him to beat up Bruce Lee. Like, yeah. come on. I was like, okay, this I'm I'm on board with this. This is cool. And his family got mad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Very mad about it. Um yeah. one, <laughs> one more thing. I I cannot talk about uh Chinese Chinese movies without this is my all-time favorite kung fu movie. Uh this it's only on DVD, but this is uh the the master of the flying guillotine. Nice, yeah. Um Oh God! Watch this movie. This this is amazing. He has this this weapon, which is like a circle, and he throws it, and it comes on your head, and then he he pulls it, and pulls he, it off. <laughs> it's, a, it's a flying guillotine. It's yeah. it, this is the ultimate kung fu movie. It has everything you want. It has training. It has like a big competition at the end. I do have a. I found a Japanese poster of the movie. Let's put the poster up right now and post it up. Nice. I'll give it to you later. It's one <laughs> of my prized possessions. I, I love that fucking movie. It's so good. Uh, Master of the Flying Guild. Okay. And yeah, there's so many great like 70s movies, the Shaw Brothers movies, so much stuff. Yeah, all the Wu Tang stuff. That yeah, you know, it was it was one arm swordsman and yeah yeah. And this is a, he's one he's got fucking one arm. Yeah, <laughs> he's a one arm swordsman. This is like the sequel to the one arm swordsman. Yeah, is it Jimmy Wang Yu? I think is the, yeah. the actor. And yeah. So it, it was it was Quentin Tarantino and it was the RZA. Like those are yeah. the two guys that like that brought it. Yeah. Chinese movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I wish more of that stuff was on LD. Some of those older ones. Uh, maybe we'll this have to was some up. It was lost though. Even in this, there are scenes that are. You have English, and then it cuts to, to Chinese because they just don't have it. You know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. A lot of that stuff got trashed. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it. I, I have, yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. Now I'm glad somebody brought a uh, a Bruce Lee and a hopping vampire because we definitely needed to cover those two angles. So excellent. Um, you guys ready for the wolf pick? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Well, a lot of the Hong Kong cinema stuff is especially the the films we were talking about in the 90s was dealing with a whole threat of the reunification because in 1997 they gave Hong Kong back to China and hopefully my internet will hold up my internet is really bad tonight um, but a lot of people flew uh, to America to make films including John Woo so we're going to do John Woo's first couple American movies head to head what's better Hard Target or Broken Arrow what do you got Ryan how many of them have Christian Slater in them? Uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, this one, just just one. There this you one. go. Okay. You can't go wrong with Slater. Not 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 JCVD. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. Wilford Brimley. That's not gonna. That's not gonna move the needle. He's on a horse. <laughs> He's on a horse. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That's a broken arrow. All right. 
What's Max got? My, my reasoning is the same. <laughs> Slater. It's always right, Slater. Slater. Okay. Right. Always right. Slater. All right. Fair enough. There's a DTS version of this. Anybody? There is yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. There's a there's a Japanese cut that's even longer. Ooh, extended. Yeah. yeah, extended cut. All right. <laughs> two all right, two broken arrows. What do you got, Luke? Why why aren't you holding up face off? Like why why don't you have face off? <laughs> well, because then everyone would just choose face off. <laughs> I had to I had to make something that was choosable. Uh, I I haven't watched either of those movies. If I was gonna pick one, like yeah. you have to watch one of those, it would be Broken Arrow. Oh, yeah, Broken Arrow all the way. I'm gonna do the. Uh, I'm not gonna break the tie because there's no tie. I'm gonna go with Hard Target. Um, yeah, it's got Wilford Brimley riding victoriously with a bow and arrow with explosive tips, like with a shed exploding behind him. It's got Lance Henriksen screaming all the time, like chopping snakes and, and with his hands. It's got Arnold Vosloo. It's it's great. Uh, JCVD like can't act, but he's fantastic. And Yancy Butler is in it, and she looks completely terrified throughout the entire film uh, yeah so there you go that's mine long hair jcvd right yeah he's got the super greasy looks mullet like, yeah looks like uh what's his uh nicholas cage from con air kind of yeah true nick stole uh stole his look and it's got a lot of the great scenes where it's like everybody stands around and waits for him to kick their ass yeah because if you're like yeah teaming up with five guys you gotta just kind of hang out yeah it's, Lance Henriksen's so great, though. He kills his own dudes. Like, he's just so angry all the time, except when he's playing piano. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's so good. But yeah, it's got the mummy in it. Oh, my God. I love yeah. it. I love it. All right. You guys, uh, all right. Let's move into recent spins. <laughs> Let me get my spins. See if I can find them. I had to go um, dig into one of my old. John Woo films, and I did uh, Bullet in the Head. I uh, actually got this in Chinatown when Laserdisc was pretty much dying. I went into NYC with some friends, and um, oh yeah, there's actually a good story here. All right, and uh, I was like, maybe they have Laserdisc. Sure enough, they were giving them away pretty much. So I got this for like I don't know, 15 bucks or something. Um, but yeah, so me and my friends would get together and we'd watch all these Hong Kong movies, and uh, so we went to Chinatown, and my buddy Matt uh, decided to buy like a Shaolin kind of decorative outfit. And then we had to, we had to pee really, really bad. And there's nowhere to you know go to the bathroom unless you pay in New York city and Chinatown. So we had to go to a restaurant and just pretty much use the bathroom. But then we sat and ate and all these guys started coming out of the woodwork and they're just surrounding the table and they're asking him, do you know, Kung Fu, you know, Kung Fu. And they're all busting his balls. And I'm pretty sure they were all about to fight him. And then my buddy Don was there and he was from Laos and they kept asking him if he was from Hong Kong. And he's like, no, I'm from Laos. And they're like, Hong Kong, you're from Hong Kong. And he's like, no, I'm from Laos. So, you know, Kung Fu. And yeah. So I, yeah, I almost got killed. Thanks to my buddy, Matt uh, in Chinatown buying this disc, but it was worth it. Bullet in the head is like the grittiest, nastiest John Woo movie. It's yeah. It's kind of got some uh, deer hunter apocalypse now vibes going on. There's nothing fun going on. It's about, you know, these three kids, getting on the wrong side of the law and they decide, you know, Hey, we're going to go to Vietnam because you can make money smuggling in like medical supplies and they go to Vietnam and they, they, everything goes wrong and they meet a, like a torch singer in a nightclub who's like hooked on opium and then all sorts of hell breaks loose. They end up getting you know, caught by the Viet Cong and tortured. And they, eventually one of these tight knit brothers sells the others out and and one of them ends up with it with a literal bullet in the head at one point of the film and uh, a little bit of revenge taking place towards the end of the film but uh this unfortunately got cut a little bit just to fit it on one laser disc they're like yeah we'll just kind of chop up the end a bit but i still had to get it and, and watch it again but yeah it's really intense it's it's the gnarliest john woo movie it's it does have a lot of interesting action but it's not none of it's feel good it's just kind of yeah it's feel gross action movie but gotta love it and um, then I also watched Tai Chi Master, which is one of my favorite Jet Li films. Jet Li and Michelle Yeoh, and it Jet Li is you know this this kid at you know, at the temple, and him and his his you know brother he calls him. It's not really his brother, but you know they they get into trouble all the time, and his brother is like too prideful and 
you know, wants to be the best and they end up just like kicking everyone's ass like haphazardly and then attacking their, you know, Sifu and the, the master and they get kicked out of the temple essentially. And they're trying to make their way and they, they meet Michelle Yeoh and get involved in her troubles and, and his brother like ends up selling himself. There's always a eunuch in these films. There's always like a eunuch that either is a ruler, like a local ruler or like assistant to the emperor. And he rolls in and he's just like super ruthless. And like Jet Li's brother is like, I'll be extra ruthless. So that sets up this huge conflict, um, killer fight scenes. And uh, it gets wacky in the end because it's like Jet Li realizes his brother went bad and he goes kind of mad. So at the end, they start training him in Tai Chi to kind of like soothe his mind. And then he starts learning the secret wonders of Tai Chi and how he can use that to, you know, avoid all hits. And yeah, it's, it's really fun. Great film. Then I revisited Peace Hotel. This is uh, pretty much the, the end of the line for Chai Fat before he bailed on Hong Kong and moved oh. to New York um, or Los Angeles. Sorry. But back in the day, everyone would say, oh, this is like John Woo really ghost directed this but he just produced it um but super stylish movie it's it's kind of a mixed bag but i watched this for the first time at like two in the morning and it is a lot of drama going on so not as much it's not you know he is literally called the killer in the film so everybody was expecting this like john woo death fest and sure he's got some automatic weaponry in one scene but it's kind of like a 1920s vibe going for it um and he, he's basically this ultimate badass who just murdered this entire place and he runs this hotel that harbors yeah it's kind of like you know the hotel in in john wick you know where you can go if you're you know you're a bad person but nobody can mess with you in there and then he protects you um so this one woman rolls in and of course she's got a bit of a past and says she knows him and there's an entire gang that's out to kill her and so she, she starts putting everybody's lives at risk in this peace hotel but yeah chang fat he'll uh He'll bust out a Tommy gun and blow your ass away. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit mixed. It's not quite as strong as uh, as I'd hope, but it's super freaking stylish. So it was worth revisiting that. Cool. Then uh, I've been wanting to see this again for a while. Pom Pom and Hot Hot. Amazing. Yes, Pom Pom and Hot Hot. Uh, fantastic film about uh, Jackie Chung and uh, this other guy. Oh, I forgot the actor's name. Uh, that's that's. Bonnie Fu, she was in, um, that's Virgin from uh, Full Contact. Yes. Uh, they are cops and their boss is like this super bad, that's him down there. He's a super badass, but like nobody knows. He's just like their kind of cool, calm captain guy. <laughs> and um, so they get involved in this whole thing. And then meanwhile, his like cousin from the mainland is coming to visit. And then his sister also comes and she's like super like he's all mean to her and she's all grumpy and she bangs her head on the wall all the time. Uh, so yeah, they get into all these shenanigans and it is just hilarious and goofy. There's like a huge Mahjong comedy scene in it. And then all of a sudden at the end, it turns into this insane action bit where they're going off against this assassin and they're, they're, they're super cop. You know, captain comes and he's like flying and holding on to things and people are like kicking gun clips into the air and doing like hacky sack with gun clips and <laughs> so yeah it's like the goofiest comedy ever and then all of a sudden just insane like john woo times 12 uh, fight scenes and and yeah it's just so much fun yeah it's got a great scene where like he you know i guess he used to live in in hong kong when he was a kid and he comes back and he like gets reunited with her and she's working in this brothel and he doesn't realize that she's his old high school sweetheart and or you know, school sweetheart. And he's like, you remind me of this girl, Nancy. And he's like talking about her. And she's like, you asshole. Like that, it's me. <laughs> uh, then I watched um, The Bodyguard from Beijing, which is a bit of a trip. This is Jet Li doing The Bodyguard. Uh, he's the Kevin Costner <laughs> character and she's the Whitney Houston character. Um, and she's uh, you know, the spoiled girlfriend of this rich guy who... You know, she witnesses a crime. And then, of course, this guy from the mainland has to go to Hong Kong to protect her. And, of course, Jet Li just is all business. And, of course, she falls in love with him. But it's got uh, Kent Cheng, the uh, the guy from uh, Sex and Zen, who was the doctor. We might talk about that later. Um, but, yeah, he's Fatty Poe, the fat, useless policeman that's hanging around with Jet Li all the time. Um, it's more drama and, and like you know, moony eyed romance and it is action, but there's a scene where of course she always wants to go out and they're like, there's dudes everywhere that are going to kill you. So of course she wants to go to the mall and they kill the whole mall pretty much. And then, you know, later on this one 
guy who wants to get revenge and comes and invades her house and all hell breaks loose. So there's some good stuff. Jet Li's mostly using guns in this, so it's a, you know a little bit different. But this is a weird one. Oh yeah, there's uh, this fatty, fatty Poe. Uh, there's also a little kid in there that's kind of annoying, but it's it's fun. The weird thing though is this um, is this company World Video Supply. They kind of made it look like a Maya jacket, but they were like one of the Tyson competitors. So this is actually like a late '90s U.S. release. So what they did was they just took the normal film and then they, all the bits with the Mandarin and the English subtitles on the bottom, they just put a black bar over it and made it look like it was a wide, like super widescreen movie. So and then they put their own subtitles, which are also badly translated, over the black bar. So throughout many parts of the movie, somebody's face is like cut off at the nose. Because they just put a black bar. And then when the end credits happen, there's no need for it anymore. It just disappears. And you see, oh, it was like a full picture the whole time. So way to go. Oh, that's amazing. Was that it? Was that the last thing I watched? I think so. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that was it. What about you, Ryan? All right. Um, I'm glad that like we've not overlapped at all. Because I was worried that we'd all watch like, you know, the killer and hard boiled, but well, I did watch those too. Uh, so did I. <laughs> um, I watched uh, Wheels, Wheels on Wheels. This is fantastic. So yeah. you've got Jackie Chan and Yuan Lao who are running a food truck in Barcelona, Spain, and Sammo Hung is working for this detective who just up and skips town because he owes money to the mafia. Yeah, <laughs> and they run across this girl who uh, basically is a thief and gets caught up, but she also happens to be royalty and it just spirals. And there's some just amazing sequences again with all three of them fighting the ending. Jackie Chan fights a guy for like 20 minutes. It seems yeah. it's just nonstop <laughs> and just completely enjoyable. And uh, this is a U.S. release. So it, it's pretty easy to find. So, yeah. I could do my research. If I remember correctly, they it was supposed to be called Meals on Wheels, but there was some sort of superstition about like movies that start with M. Like I guess like the last one the the director made tanked or something. So like we can't have it be an M movie. So it's Wheels on Meals. Makes complete sense. I love that. Yeah. I hope that's real. <laughs> I watched uh, Thunderbolt. With, oh, uh, Jackie, Jackie Flex. Wow. He races, and uh, there's really good fighting sequences again but like the whole thing is like he has to beat this like guy who's this you know killer and he's from america in a race like that's the only way it's gonna happen yeah and i feel like the race was the biggest letdown of the whole movie because it was just so <laughs> hokey like it was fine don't get me wrong yeah. but compared to the fighting sequences and the action scenes and when the guy just like destroys where jackie chan lives like, the race just wasn't as good. There, there was a scene in the, the casino where the Jackie Chan was just destroying the whole casino. <laughs> Amazing. Race, just kind of hokey. It was good, though. And it was sponsored by Mitsubishi. Wanted wow. to get that plug in. He's always like, racing the Mitsubishis, yeah. <laughs> I watched uh, oh my gosh. Skinny oh. Tiger and Fatty Dragon. Hell yeah, uh, Samo. It's like Samo Chrome Max. Samo is amazing. Like everything he's in, he's hilarious. And uh, this guy, yeah, I think that's Carl like, Mock from uh, Aces Go Places and all exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. He's yeah. always called like Baldy or Bald Guy. Like, yeah, just, Baldy. They, they don't even like get creative. They're just like Baldy. <laughs> and you're <laughs> fatty. Yeah, and you're bald. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, it, it, this is just really funny and entertaining. And uh, I, I think that the, these two together were just a really good duo. I mean, just look at that cover, man. Oh, oh yeah, like I mean that looks very watchable. Oh yeah, you, you I, I highly recommend it. Yes, I'm looking for it. All right, Luke, are you going to talk about Heart of Dragon? Yeah. It's okay, I'll, 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 I'll hold off. Spoiler okay. alert, or I'll cut that. Well, out. it's it's behind. <laughs> oh yeah, damn it. <laughs> there's, there's no spoiler. <laughs> so uh, I watched Samo Express Ooh. with Samo. He's I our Drew Barrymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He, he's just, you know, he pops. Yeah, dude. But so Samo in this one plays a guy who's kind of just like a con man and, you know, has kind of screwed off his entire life. And he goes back to the town he's from 
with a plan to like rob this millionaire train and the hijinks that ensue. So you've got Samo and the rest of this cast. You've got Rothrock and Richard Norton Damn. and Gwen Bao. And it, it just spirals into madness and nonstop fighting sequences. And it's wholly enjoyable. And uh, a lot of it takes place in like this hotel and just, just good stuff. And it's a US release, another easy one to find. Nice. Or it was oh until we blew it up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two weeks from now, sorry. <laughs> and then the last one I want to talk about is Bloody Mary Killer, uh -oh. aka Undefeatable. So this movie was made for two different markets. Uh, there's a US version. And there's the Hong Kong version. He's only in the Hong Kong version. <laughs> His entire like existence in the movie crosses paths with Rothrock like once. <laughs> and they filmed it for the Hong Kong market. They, <laughs> if you watch the US version, you would have no clue that like he was even part of the movie or existed. Because it was just, it felt bolted on. It didn't, it didn't flow well. It broke everything up. But the fight sequences, again, <laughs> are great. Rothrock does this fighting where like the first person that falls to the ground loses and there's like three or four fights like that and then at the end when they kill the bad guy there's there's a really good scene with a hook on this oh. sounds good I, I don't think I gave it away right no. no so I you'd be good yeah so it, it's just really really cool and uh you can find the U.S. release the I think it's image entertainment pretty easy so if you're looking for it find that one because i've never seen a copy of the hong kong one so. and there's pm ryan and he'll tell you what you missed yeah in the hk version you yeah. didn't like yeah. it was like a subplot about like mob lists and it, it didn't help or advance the movie at all it just made it for hong kong so all right how about you maxine okay i mixed it up a little bit because i watched all those other things so in between watching all of those things i watched Oh, hell yeah. PJ. Just a different, you know, just a little different vibe. Um, this was crazy. I uh, had seen part of this, but I'd never seen the whole thing. Um, and it was very enjoyable. And I really just was, wow. It was just, I mean, these, these guys. <laughs> yeah, so good. Yeah. Woo. And just the, I mean, woo, that whole movie. I mean, that's a, that almost goes without question. If you haven't seen that, like, that's worth watching. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> and then. Oh, which has a scene early on that completely rips off Jackie Chan's uh, police story where he holds the gun up in the air and stops the truck and the truck driver falls out the window. Dude. This I had actually never seen before. And it, it's uh, ridiculous. It's just freaking cliche cop thing one after the other and it was incredible i it really is, enjoyed it it is cheese, <laughs> cheese. you know what i needed some cheese i needed some cheese that i could just relax to and not read any subtitles because like it was a lot of subtitles and i i like subtitles i don't mind now mind reading all of these things yeah. but some of the subtitles are so off that you're almost like decoding mm -hmm. some things oh yeah like okay i need like just like a mental break and yeah. that was the mental break. That was great. That's great. And then the other mental break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. Oh, yes. I was wondering who was going to get to describe this movie first. <laughs> it's you. This came highly recommended from these people here. What a movie. What a freaking movie. I had zero expectations. I mean, yeah. this cover just gives me nothing. It's just, yeah. this could be anything really in, in this uh, form <laughs> yeah, well, it's boring but, it but is, there's so much more it's so much more this is a comedy yeah. this is a wild film with a lesson at the end right weird this is just i mean look find this find this and watch this obviously if you're of age to watch this because yeah. it's category three <laughs> <laughs> there's a flute there's a horse <laughs> There, the surgery scene is like one of the funniest things ever. It's one of the, I, I was laughing the whole freaking time. I was like crying. Yeah. It was so funny to me. Just like right. baby guillotines, like purposely for, for that for, job. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, 
like what how did he even have that and then he's just trapped in a barrel and then somehow he freaking gets splashed this medicine on his hand so his he's hands all numb. Go numb and then he's afraid of lightning and it's like a lightning yeah. storm outside yeah, the surgeon like <laughs> is surgeon. like something happened to his family or whatever in a lightning storm so whenever light uh, like there's lightning he freaks out during a surgery scene <laughs> he's flipping out and then he's like his hands are all like i don't know I, can, I can't do surgery and we only have one incense left the barrel falls over and it's rolling around everything is measured in how long it takes to burn an incense that's yeah. like the time like half an incense time <laughs> it's like, it was absolutely out of control ridiculous yeah i mean he literally goes blind from yeah, too much sex <laughs> from just too much and just the over the top with the sheet and it's like yeah it would be off the screen i'd yeah. have to zoom out yeah it's out of control it's yeah. out of control it was the funniest shit i've ever seen i was <laughs> what's the name on that again i missed the name it's it's sex and zen yeah okay yeah. Little baby I made it to like the lesbian gazebo scene and I stopped because oh like, yeah the can't... flute you got to the flute and then the flute. yeah the flute there's some calligraphy in here well, there's a lot calligraphy. of <laughs> yes so like weird underwater scene like how deep is this yeah. hot tub yeah like... there's that one guy that turns into a madman he's like swinging around the house while they're getting it on and <laughs> that was Moro from Stream yeah. Angel and he's like pouring like alcohol on his head. <laughs> <laughs> so good i don't know what to say about that film like, you're gonna say you're gonna watch it and report back next episode oh i i made it to the band camp flute scene in a gazebo with uh, two lesbians and i was like what the hell did i just watch um you gotta go all the go way <laughs> i was just laughing the whole time though yeah. i mean everything was just so stupid and just yeah. in control like what who made this who got the green light to make this it, it, that's a funny story it was pretty much made by the triad so gangsters made it oh my god even better that makes it so much better <laughs> yeah i love the lesson though the lesson is don't do all the shit you just watch it's, it's legit yeah like, the guy's like just a dork <laughs> and then he learns his lesson he's just i know and the, oh i love i love the thief guy the yeah. thief guy that like becomes his like mentor and friend yeah, and he always like, tell me what you can. And he's like, whatever, you're a loser. And he just like, he just like breaks into everybody's house. Like that's like his yeah. like skill. Yeah. He just like can break into everybody's house like silently. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So funny. Good oh. stuff. I'm glad you watched it. I'm glad somebody else watched it. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> I, ha I had zero expectations. Uh, walked away feeling like that was really something. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, <sighs> excellent. Now you got to top that, Luke. <laughs> Can't do that. Can't do it. <laughs> don't, don't, you don't want to. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to be honest. Like, um, I try, I started a lot of movies. Okay. Like, I, I, it was a hard <laughs> week. I, I've been doing a lot of stuff. And yeah, I put them on and then just kind of fell asleep. So I'm, I we appreciate your honesty. I didn't, I didn't watch them all, but I'll, I'll start with ones I did finish all the way through. All right. Yeah. So Cushing, we're going to start with this guy, Heart of the Dragon. Okay. Uh, I heard about this through uh, something else. Somebody told me, I think I was listening to a commentary or something and said, everybody, you know, is interested in Heart of the Dragon. So, like, oh, okay. Super. It's easy to get. And uh, basically you got Jackie Chan and you got Sammo Hung. And Sammo Hung is going full simple Jack. And yep. Full on. He does not fight. He does nothing, but he is a person with special needs. Okay. And then uh, Jackie Chan is his brother. And this is more of a drama than a action movie. The start, they there's like, they do like uh, bookend it with some crazy action stuff. Uh, the beginning, he's they're doing some training exercise and he's got some crazy, Jackie Chan has some crazy gun, whatever. Um, they, I, I got to the flip and there was like no, no action sequence. I'm like, what am I watching? Like, what is going on here? Um, and they're, they're both, there's one scene with both of them and they are just eating the scenery. They are just, 
just Oscar baiting it up. Oh, it's melodrama, what man. If yeah. I do, if I do, blah, 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 you're going to leave me. I love blah, 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 blah. It's crazy. Um, I, I finished it. So that's something, right? right? Yeah, uh, there's one scene where where Jackie's like, "I'm gonna be a sailor," <laughs> and me as a sailor, I'm like, "No, don't do it. <laughs> no, don't do that." <laughs> uh, but yeah, Ryan, did you watch it? Like, what? What are your yeah, thoughts? It, it it was hard watching Samo, and I like him, but yeah. ooh, I I haven't watched much many other movies with him so it was easier for me to watch it was like okay cool got it that's the thing yeah yeah i mean i don't know if they're trying to win an award for it or what they were definitely trying to win an award for it yeah <laughs> it was yeah it was, it was on wikipedia and my 10 seconds of research and they said that they wanted him to fight but samo said no i'm not gonna fight like <sighs> whatever it, it, it was rough though yeah all right, so um, other movies. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll run through the Hong Kong movies I started but didn't really get into. Um, all right, yeah, I'll do those first. All right, next, first one, I, I tried to watch uh, Storm Raiders. Mm. Um, this was oh. one I found in Singapore. Nice. This has uh, Sonny Chiba in it. Yeah. Ooh. And I wanted to talk about Street Fighter, but it is a very, it is a Japanese movie. Um, and I, I always thought Sonny Chiba was half Chinese, half Japanese, but when I looked into it, I couldn't find any, and, and whatever. Anyway, I, I started this guide and I didn't get very far. Okay. Uh, Shaolin Temple. Nice. Japanese, no English, started it, did not get very far. Corner Obi. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, this was another disc I found. You know, as I was leaving Japan, Police Story, the original Police Story. Ooh, nice. Oh. Um, next one, I, I uh, this is a, this is Crippled Masters. Oh, okay. American Kung Fu movie. Not like, not many, there's not many American, you know, this is a U.S. release image Kung Fu movie and it's Crippled Masters. He legit has no arms and there's a guy I think who has no legs. It's it's kind of disturbing to watch, but it's it's pretty cool. Anyway, I don't see that disc very often. Yeah. yeah, I got it pretty cheap. I mean, nice. yeah. Um, some more that I watch. This guy, that's Hong Kong action. You know, mm. I think there's two of these. This oh. is a very like cheaply done American documentary about Hong Kong movies. It's one of those act, you know documentaries where did, they just shot the person talking quickly wherever they were you know and of course all... it's got john claude on there right of course well, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he, you asked too many questions <laughs> uh, yeah whatever yeah. um this one of, you know um, yeah yeah, yeah. Ooh, what do we is, have here uh, let me show you this is um stephen chow movie nice he so you got like i said john woo you got Jackie Chan, you got Bruce Lee, and you got Stephen Chow. I think yeah. those are the four for me. Uh, of course, Stephen Chow, who did um, Kung Fu Hustle. Hell that yeah. Movie's, it's amazing. Like, it's just great. And this one is uh, God of Gamblers Part 3. Hell yeah. To Shanghai. Okay. I, would, I mean, it's there was a guy selling loose discs on eBay, and I, this is one I picked up. And it's, I think the original God of Gamblers had Chow Yun Fat. Yep. And it seemed like a legit movie, but we're in part three and it's just going back in time. It's just seeing, meeting your grandfather. It's just craziness. It was, Ch Stephen Chow has that, the Looney Tunes, you know, he's he, Kung Fu Hustle, like he, that one scene where he's just, he's running like the coyote. Yeah. It, it's just- and the old lady. <laughs> yeah. uh, he does it well. Um, the last one that I started, is black mass this yeah. is the different cuts or different right? i pressing. found this in singapore as well uh according to ldb it has the the only original soundtrack version of it is on this guy mm, interesting i didn't get very i didn't get very <laughs> yeah. okay all right next one these are movies i actually watched uh this guy talk radio mm. oliver stone movie um, about a radio host, very liberal radio host. He just uh, very popular, and there's one weekend where he's told that he's going to be syndicated, and he doesn't really like it. And it was just, it was. I really enjoyed it. This was a good movie. Uh, he's kind of like a Howard Stern character, where he just 
but more like direct and angry and just um i yeah this was this was an excellent movie uh it's got rockets red glare in it the, he's actor he who was in uh mystery train a lot of jim jarmusch movies he's he was in this movie i like seeing him um but yeah talk radio oh yeah um other movies i watched I will talk a lot more about uh, John Waters movies later on, but I watched some Hairspray. Uh, I've got the original version too. Oh, yeah, OG. And I watched this guy, Desperate Living. Um, this one was disturbing. <laughs> like it's a, got a warning right on the John jacket. Waters movie. Yeah. <laughs> but this one was like a crazy Alice in Wonderland. I, d I didn't get very far. I'm like, ooh, I'm not in the mood for this one right now, but uh, I think I'll have to revisit it. Right. Anyway. That's all I've been spinning. All right. Lately. Excellent. I'm glad yeah. you managed to power through at least a couple of films. Just yeah. a few. Just yeah. a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do some pickups. Bam, bam, bam. I think I'll let's see if I can get them all here. Oh, making my stack fall over. Uh, a couple I already showed already, but I. I um, I broke my camera. I wanted to get the two-part Drunken Master too, just because I had the 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 gold single disc. But you know, when I had it on the tape that was bootleg back in the day, it would you know it ended halfway through, and it was like part two. Yeah, so I was like, I really wanted to revisit that old version. So I found somebody uh, who was selling these, and I looked that it had the rental stickers. It was like you know, added that level of reality. I showed this in the intro. I I'd never had a official copy of a better tomorrow too uh great looking disc i love these um the golden uh princess and the cinema city discs a lot of the john woo movies are from them that they actually use the thick japanese style jackets uh so they you know really hold up well and um but on the downside like the transfer on this is, is pretty washed out like the the blacks are kind of blue and everything like that but yeah it's a great film where it's a follow-up to the classic a better tomorrow John uh, Chang and Fat's character uh, plays the brother of a character from the first one because you're like, oh, he totally had a brother nobody knew about and he lives in New York. So um, Dean Shack for, is like just over the top. He goes pretty much uh, full Simple Jack as well. And uh, Chang and <laughs> Fat has to kind of nurse him back into shape. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, Lizzie Chung's great in it. And T Long is just fantastic. And uh, it's, yeah, it's got a great shootout, and it's got the the end of the film where they they just pretty much take on this entire gang inside this house, and they break out swords too for fun, and uh, that you could see that in True Romance. There's a little bit where Patricia Arquette's watching that uh, at Christian Slater's house on his TV. Oh, yeah, it's Christian Slater. Yeah. I also picked up a uh, Burning Paradise, which is a cool ass film, and this is a two parter. Uh, they actually uh, Tai Seng got these from Hong Kong, and you know, packaged them together and put the phobia on there. That doesn't, and it kind of tells you some of their other movies they have, uh, but it's just the straight up Hong Kong discs. But uh, Ringo Lam did the guy who did City on Fire and Full Contact, but this is like an old like Shaolin Temple kind of one. It's like these dudes in this temple that's just full of traps. And there's this evil unit guy. There's always an evil unit guy. So anytime they try and do something, you know, the, the floors open up and gas comes out of things and it's just so much fun. And it's also got Feng Sei Yuck, but uh, different character playing, you know, different actor playing Feng Sayak and different stuff going on. I got Swordsman, which is like one of the most badass covers ever. Yeah. Uh, Swordsman 2 with Jet Li playing this guy is uh, a little bit more well known, but uh, really good, really dense. A lot of stuff going on this, a lot of double and triple crosses and, you know, people impersonating other people and just, uh, yeah, really fun. I've been wanting to get this for a while, but yeah, I just love that freaking jacket. And I got. The Japanese, which is like one of the best ways to get it. I think there's another release of this, the Armor of God. This is the old uh, analog version, also known as Thunder Arm. Um, but it's the Jackie Chan movie where he uh, messed himself up. There's an early scene when he's running around these ruins and he's like an Indiana Jones kind of James Bond character and he's uh, stealing precious artifacts, the Armor of God. Like, you know, there's a sword and uh, all sorts of other parts that he's forced to go pick up because his uh, ex-flame is... Uh, has been kidnapped by these evil monks and he gets involved you know, with this woman and her, you know, there's these uh, kind of crazy tough Amazonian women that he, he punches their boobs in one scene. That's a uh, oh. classic Jackie Chan. He drives a uh, Mitsubishi around and does some crazy moves, but yeah, he, um, and yeah, he jumps onto a balloon in one scene, Got but yeah, there's a, 
a bit where he jumps from like one of these walls to a tree and then he landed on a camera and it poked a legit hole in his skull. So you can see that on the uh, the end credits bloopers. It's dubbed into English, but it's widescreen. It's pretty much like the only good way to see that movie. And um, I had to get more Funk Sai Yuck because I had the version. Where was it? Is it here? That um, where they, I don't know if you can see it, but they just kind of covered over part one. Oh, yeah, you could really see it there. They just kind of like sharpied over basically the part one in Chinese there. And then they did the same thing on the back. And then they just put a one disc in here. And we didn't even mention Prinko. A lot of these discs are made in Japan. And so they're really high quality, like Kure pressings. But then there was also Prinko, who, uh, I don't know, were they Taiwanese, Ryan? Did we ever find out where they were from? They're, I think they're Chinese press, but I don't know. And uh, they're, they're subject to rot. So these Funk Sai Yuck single discs are really easy to find, but one side is always rotted. And it's weird. It's like this power rot where every inch of the screen is like distorted and the, uh, the audio is totally messed up. So I found old rental copies of the original part one and part two so I could watch it properly. And I think this is one of the cool ones where they're all in CAV. Usually they, they're not nice to you. They just give you all CLV sides and sometimes load it up with ads for like video stores and the, the company's new releases. Sometimes they have some badass like karaoke jams on there too. Yes, I had one. <laughs> was that? Yeah. So it was cool. Uh, cool getting that. Then I had to get a copy to replace my VHS bootleg of sex and Zen. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. High quality. I think even like uh, it was penthouse magazine was even like sponsoring this in their, yes, their they- Hong Kong magazine. Uh, yeah, you, you got to check it out for everything Max said. But yeah, especially for the scene, you can't really see it there. But yeah, this guy. Oh, it's so uh, good. He decides he wants to get re enhanced, essentially. And this guy's going to hook him up with a new gin- ginormous um, attachment. And uh, <laughs> hilarity ensues. New, new limb. He's a massive new limb. limb yeah. attached. He's going to be tripod. Yes. And I uh, got some Tai Sing American reissues, Heroic Trio, Johnny Toe film, really refined. It's got everybody and their mother in this from uh, Anita Mui, the late Anita Mui, uh, Michelle Yeoh, and uh, Maggie Chung. You know, they're Wonder Woman, Thief Catcher, and Invisible Girl. There's, of course, a crazy eunuch demon kind of guy. And it's got a bit of a nod to um, the flying Master of Flying Guillotine, the, the kind of henchman, has the, you know, the throwing guillotine head removal device. Um, it's got a sticker on here. It says 87 minutes. I guess they put the wrong wrong time on there. But yeah, decent Tai Sang release. And I had to get the sequel, Executioners. Yes. Which were the same characters, but it's just way darker. It was like more of like a weird Tim Burton kind of uh, future. I think, you know, the, the looming transfer from Hong Kong from Britain to China was like kind of looming. And so they got a little darker with this one. And uh had to get i had to buy these separately because some people sometimes people see the two parters and they think they're two separate movies so i had to buy both parts of wicked city which is one of the rare occasions when uh they did um like a kind of sci-fi thing this is uh you know, originally japanese anime and, and book series and yeah it's nuts man of course it's got all sorts of stolen music lots of western music um uh the, the one band that did uh the friend song they have a they have a track on here no. and yeah, it's got cops. It's pretty much like another dimension with like demons and stuff like that. And there's cops that are pretty much monitoring them and they're called like Raptors and this, oh. you know, one girl's one of them. And so it's kind of got like a vampire bladeish kind of vibe for it. Uh, but there's like shape shifting going on involved. So eventually like there's this giant battle on this high rise and I don't think they show it. I wish they did, but the, the, the bad guy turns himself into a jumbo jet. Uh, and starts flying around the city. He's literally a jumbo jet with like a dude's head sticking out of the top. Yeah. It, it is completely insane. Yeah, so it's it's pretty wild. It's got a lot of wacky special effects. Uh, Jackie Chung is in there. And uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Wow. Uh, I had to get some old John Woo. I never had Last Rock for Chivalry. This is like one of his period pieces. It's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, so I got to check it out finally. Tai Sing US release. So got that. It's got liner notes included. And uh, the other John Woo one, Hero Shed No Tears. Uh, this is like one of those ones he had and it got it sat on a shelf for years and then A Bear Tomorrow came out and they're like, oh, put that out in theaters. So nobody really liked it that much at the time, but I've heard some good things about it. So again, Tai Sing US release. Wanted to grab that and 
I guess I'll leave that at that. I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of other stuff. Max sent me some things. Thanks, Max. Yes. Including this uh, Sony pen, which you probably yes. can't see. Uh, but I'll save those for the next podcast. Now I got some music related things, but I'll, uh, I'll move on to Ryan. Well, Sam, uh, one quick update. Uh, you were correct. Uh, it was Taiwan for a Prinko. For a Prinko? Okay. And they do have a website, which if you want to, we can drop it into the chat or nice. uh, into the description. It shows their timeline of when they like started printing laser discs, and it, it's That's still awesome. there. It's just like a plain text like timeline. So really cool that that still exists. Some of mine are good. Like they did my Sex and Zen, and that was spotless the whole way through. So sometimes they do it good, but. Oh, yeah. yeah, it makes me wonder if like the early ones, like everything weren't as good, mm. but who knows? All right. So uh, I also kind of went crazy because uh, <laughs> Sam and I were talking and uh, things just kept coming up <laughs> and uh, why, why not? I, I mean, I won a, like an auction with like six things in there and I didn't have like most of them. So just, it just kept raining. So we'll, we'll try and go quick. Uh, first one is prison on fire here. Hell yeah. Uh, Ringo Lam, man. Yeah. I had number two and I'm like, well, I can't watch number two unless I watch number one, because as we know, sequels always draw directly from the original. Absolutely. And I believe it's Chow Yun Fat because every movie should have him in it. Of course. <laughs> uh, a better Pass. tomorrow three. Wow. Yeah. There's your guy right there. Wow. Yep. Obviously. <laughs> uh, bloody Friday. Mm. Wow. This is a Simon Yam crime mystery thriller Ooh. about call girls getting murdered. And I had to add this to LDB. And this came via Indonesia. Wow. So it just happened to hit at the right time and I held it because nice. yeah, of course. Um, I know we were talking about hopping Ooh. vampires. This is Magic Cop, aka oh, yeah. like Mr. What Vampire Four. Five. I think it's five. Oh, five? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that, that guy is in everything. That guy was in uh, <laughs> Heart, of, Heart of Darkness, right? Or Heart of, Heart of the Dragon. Yeah, he's in he's in all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it, it, basically the synopsis is a former cop rejoins the force to investigate a drug ring that employs ghosts and vampires. <laughs> Normal. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I love about this. Like, they're not afraid to just throw something batshit into the mix and just go with it. And it, it's wholly <laughs> enjoyable because of it. Uh, we've got Wonder 7 mm. with Michelle Yeoh. Uh, mm. Government agents investigate a computer disc robbery. I don't know what a computer disc robbery means. I don't know if it's like a CD, a drive I stolen. I no. grew up in the 90s. That happened all the time. There was a lot of computer disc robberies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> uh, I got From Beijing with Love, Stephen Chow. Stephen Chow. And this is a 007 knockoff where he's sent to investigate a stolen dinosaur skull. Mm -hmm. Laserdisc database, nice. uh, Indonesia. Nice. Wow. Uh, Hong Kong, 1941. Ah, yeah. This Ooh. is uh, set during the Japanese takeover of Hong Kong. It's very serious, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely but, serious. Though it's got a firecracker in the ear scene, if I remember correctly. That's pretty gnarly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Sam showed off the first one. Oh, the nice. One. So I picked that up. There was a seller that I won a few things in a row from and got them all like they threw in priority shipping. So I can't complain. So oh, yeah. To random eBay. <laughs> uh, Eastern Condors. with That's a fun Emma. one. Emma. Uh, Asian prisoners are recruited to destroy a stash of American weapons left behind after Vietnam. So, yeah, it's like Dirty Dozen. It's really good. Cool. I have that one. I'll have to watch it. The $60 million man. Nice. <laughs> uh, Stephen Chow, a rich playboy, gets blown up by a gangster when he flirts with the gangster's wife, and then the he builds this that? like. <laughs> Check out that suit, man. Body. It's a, Is that a plunger finger. coming out of his finger. What's oh, going yeah. on? He's got a plunger finger. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so, I, I have not seen this, but this cover alone just oh, made it worthwhile. Wow. And this one wasn't on LDDB either, even though it's obviously. That Tyson imported it. It's their yeah. sticker over what looks like another company's release. <laughs> Why make your own? <laughs> oh, Deadpool Melody. Nice. Deadpool Melody. Uh, a young security man must prove himself worthy by defending one object wanted by all masters of the martial arts world the magic lair. Of course. 
yeah. that's cool stuff hey I, it looks like it'd be cool you'll dig it uh hell yeah butterfly yeah. and sword sam talked a lot about this so yeah i'll keep rolling you'll dig it sweet the big heat oh uh, nice. Poppin investigates the murder of his partner uh shout out to Vinny who got yeah. me this so nice. yeah i know i got mine like right after you got <laughs> you got that from him <laughs> and uh this one has not enough ratings on imdb to have a score this is sdu mission in mission wow uh the the, uh, sdu is like special detective or district unit they're like the swat or like the really specialized police officers and this is a hong kong release via indonesia nice obviously of course uh got a something i've been really looking for for a while Oh, yeah. This wow. is City Cops with Cynthia Rothrock. Wow. And it's about a tough FBI cop kicking her way to a final showdown with a Chinese mafia boss. So, wow. Obviously. And it's got that guy in it. Again. Mustache power, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That alone is worth, you know, a good fight or two. A uh, legendary couple. Oh, nice. Amazing. I, I have no idea, but they're like, she's in like a bathing suit with a gun and he's got like... It's just ridiculous. Great, great cover. Uh, the Green Hornet or oh, Dragon yeah. and the Green Hornet. Uh, this is a Chinese release or Hong Kong release via Indonesia. And it's the Green Hornet story. I, guess. I, I have that one. That's one I, I found in Singapore too. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, it's definitely... <laughs> have you seen it? I've tried to watch it. Like, I want to I wanna watch <laughs> it, but it, uh, yeah. <laughs> i'm fixing to watch it yeah Ooh. Ooh. this is is my hand in the cover oh there yeah the, is that tiger on beat this is city war oh city war nice yeah and uh the original god of gamblers hell yeah wow this looks dope chow oh. and chow yeah well if i see he's in it it's just fine Definitely. why wouldn't i of course uh man wanted Ooh. yeah this Simon one, Yam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got you this, were on Kong. I got this shipped to me via media mail from Hawaii in like four days. Wow. I, I don't know how media mail works anymore. <laughs> I, I, I've given up. Got uh, Trust Me, You Die. Wow. Which is a, uh, the, the synopsis is, in England, Dr. Greg Fong invents a super steroid, which can cure virtually all illnesses and be- disorders, including impotence and idiocy. Wow. <laughs> So there's a lot going on there. That looks cool. Uh, I got a two pack here. Ooh. Angels and Angels Two. Wow. Ooh. These are pal. Uh, thank you, Seth, for these. I think they came from like uh, somewhere next to Sweden, via Sweden, from the UK Denmark? to me. Wow. So and it's about a crime farting organization called the Angels, and there's another name uh, in translation. I don't have it, but. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is called She Starts the Fire, and mm. I found out it's not in English, there are no English subs. Mm. Wow, and uh, it's I had to add it to LDDB, so I may never crack that one open because I've got a few more ahead of it. <laughs> well, three more, three more, I think, four more. Oh, Code, Code of Honor. Honor. You know, you know who that guy is, right? Yeah, that's like early chow. Yeah. Now this one, I, I love this cover. Yeah. Wow. The Warriors. Bond girl. <laughs> <laughs> they, they Cash like, in, baby. I love that. You know this movie. Yep. And she was in it, so buy this. Like, Fighty pants lady. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Royal Warriors. And it's a karate cop action drama, in case you were wondering what it kind of was about. Yeah. Perfect. Seen this? Yeah, buddy. It's the same copy. Yeah, oh yeah. This was in the the lot with a bunch of the other discs, and yep. I actually have the other version, so I'll have to compare. Yeah, but I couldn't get rid of it because I mean, it's Jelly. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, Wing Chun. Oh, Wing Chun. Nice. Yes, yeah. I have that one. Um, it's apparently an action comedy, a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Historical stuff. Do you learn stuff? Yeah, because I'm sure that it's 100% accurate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
And last but not least, <laughs> the death. That is wow. on the way to, way to and the mail. I should have gotten it today, but uh, yeah, it'll so be here tomorrow. This just looks amazing too. So it is the shit. <laughs> it looks like it. I mean, anytime that you have swords and yeah. like fighting, it looks like on the top of like a hill or something. Yeah, it's like the best swordsman in China versus the best swordsman in Japan, and they have to yeah. score. It's like Highlander type shit. Oh my yeah, God. like yeah. it's it's beautiful. Oh yeah, my. can't go wrong. Hell yeah. So how about you, Maxine? Oh, it's hard to compete with all these. I got a completely different type yep. of stuff. Can we got to start making Ryan go last? Because no, it's fine. I'm, <laughs> I, I love seeing it. It's amazing. Um, okay, so I had like a local like lot hmm. like find, and so um, yeah, I got this guy, Norman McLaren. It's kind of this. There's this whole kind of little series called Visual Pathfinders. Hmm. They're um, they're just kind of like, um, showing you in certain artists of like specific like visual art. I have a cool. couple of these, but um, they're all really bizarre and cool and just like really like old, uh, like very early early ideas hmm. of how to do kind of like digital art and things like that. Yeah, that looks eighties tastic. Yeah, exactly. It looks really cool. So I'm hoping there's some like, um so he's like an animator guy some of them are just like they do like something specific and so this one's specifically animation so there's a lot of really cool animation discs so i have been getting into those lately respect oh snap christian bale, yeah. bale. like yeah. young young christian bale they're all big names there you got yeah christian bale oliver reed christopher lee yeah Sure I have never. Sure. I know. I'm sure it's terrible. I know. It looks like a TV <laughs> thing. Look how young he is. Like, yeah. look how young he is. Does yeah. it have image entertainment too. It looked like it. It is image. Of course, it's it quality. Is. It's of course it's image. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about that. It's sealed, so I will be opening. Yeah, we'll report back. I will definitely. That was cool. Nice. Had to get this for my grandma. Um, Stuart and Pierce. Wait for your Patrick grandma. Stewart. <laughs> nice, your grandma's got taste. Loves Patrick Stewart. Just okay. Loves Pierce Brosnan. So this seems like perfect one to watch with my grandma. Man. Um, but yeah, this was like Ryan showed that. I'm like, I need that. So <laughs> it's a uh, budget James Bond. I'll put it I love that though. <laughs> I'm really excited for that. Oh damn, DB Sweeney. <laughs> Anyone even Peter? heard of this? <laughs> Peter Falk. Like, why is this real? I have no idea. It just looks such a like a weird. I think this is kind of late-ish. I was gonna say, it might be. Yeah, I've never even heard of this. I'm not sure what year it is. Late release flex. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then um my own hmm. tongue. Another one I've seen it. Yeah, I just grabbed a bunch that were like kind of ones I'd not heard of. It's got the Dermot. Yeah, it's got freaking River Phoenix in it. Oh, shit. So. Richard Harris. All right. Yeah, looked kind of interesting. Okay, now here we go. It's my favorite type of genre. Whoa. <laughs> Mon Money is in the marketplace. Money is yeah. <laughs> got, got them stonks. <laughs> it's the songs right now, guys. This is how you learn about songs. Look at those graphics. Those, those coins. High quality graphics. Now, yeah. I need you to know that this was marketed for children. Oh. So, this should be really exciting because it, it's puppets. It's probably Seth. not. Seth is right up in this. Music, photography, animation to introduce young children to economics and basic money concepts. So. I'm going to rock my piggy bank hard after that. All the way. All the way to the bank. Uh-oh. Oh, Rainbow nice. Flags. Dude, it looks like fucking John C. Riley or something. Yeah, right. or like... I know. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, this one looks really cool. My, I have several friends who are very much into 35 millimeter photography. Yeah. So this should be a fun fun watch it's like 35 dash mm too it's like <laughs> really <laughs> official very official <laughs> how to get some chip and nail oh yeah. rescue rangers hell yeah, yeah. I'm talking about. it's afternoon afternoon oh, yeah. uh, 
after school watch there. Montgomery Jack. This is sealed, so I'm definitely opening that. Yeah, that's my jam. I got another animation one. Oh, I've seen that before. Like for yeah. sale, but I think uh, is that Voyager, right? Yeah, this mm. is a Voyager one. Yeah. It's a gatefold. Yep. But it's um I I just like these are ones I like to put on in the background and just like yeah. kind of get caught up in them because some of them are just so fascinating. But this is like all just like animation and it says like there's some um a bunch of different sources. There's like Tex Avery's on the back here. So hmm. so this looked pretty cool. Nice. Hopefully it's good. And then uh, uh ooh, resin. Nice. This is a uh, really crazy looking one. I've heard good things. Yeah, I've seen pieces of that. <laughs> High quality. New Line Entertainment. Oh, yeah. Got a little karaoke bod. Lay Jesus. release karaoke. I was going to say, that looks like it was made in the 2000s. This is a lay release flex. Look Holy at crap. these songs here. I mean, these are all like... Is that Frozen by Madonna? Damn. Yeah, Frozen by Madonna. We got friggin', um There's several Spice Girls. Viva Forever. We got Backstreet Boys. And we've got more Spice Girls. And Celine Dion from Titanic, of course. So if you get that in Spice World, you'll be Spice Girls complete, maybe. I have Spice World. Your Spice Girls complete. <laughs> oh yeah. Unless there's power music too. Yeah, I know. Oh gosh, we have to find out now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On to the really good stuff. Yes. Got Manhunt. So New Horizons, and of course, Image. Quality. With the, with the dragon. With the dragon. Bloodfish yes. with Cat Sassoon. Oh yes. Who's and then and then had to pick up <laughs> Bloodfish Five. Yes. Ooh. Those are kicking through all. They they were just like all together, and I was really excited about that. Nice. And then this last one was had Jed Nelson, so I just took a chance on it. Ooh, Mia Sarah. Yeah. Virginia Madsen. Ooh, Virginia Madsen. Nice. Tim Taylor. Yeah. No, yeah. no idea. This is a New Horizons also, so I thought hopefully it's... Oh, it can't be bad. I might no. have to check that out myself. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I have I have little itty-bitty things. I almost forgot them. I have little swag pieces. What do you got? Let's see if I can focus on it. It's a little CGI pen. Nice. Nice. And then this one is Laser Karaoke. Oh, is that the parrot? Nice, it is. It says, who's next? Nice. <laughs> the tiny is so tiny in there, but it's there. We got to figure out if that parrot has a name. I know. I want to know his name. Yeah. I hope it's like Walkie Squawky or something. <laughs> yeah, Squawky. <laughs> That'd be great. It's Walkie Squawky. Yeah. Walkie Squawky. <laughs> it's official. You heard it here first. <laughs> Walkie uh, Squawky. All right, all what do right. you get, Luke? Okay. Um, I didn't get many many laser disc. Um, I got more non laser disc stuff. Oh well, that, that's coming up next. So yeah. well, we're soonish. Well, okay, cool, good to go. Uh, I finally I picked up this guy at the book off. We do have a book off in San Diego. I got the uh, the regular say anything. Nice. nice Japanese version, but I didn't have the for U.S. release. If you have not seen this, you need to pull the rock that you are living under <laughs> and go see it because it's the best movie ever. Uh, and he sent me a box. He, uh, you know, got the. He sent me two discs and, it, and a note that said, "If you miss home, you know, watch these." And these are great, just Japanese movies. Uh, some Smithsonian laser discs, reflection on the Japanese garden stuff, which was. You know, whatever. I miss, nice. I miss Japan so much. Oh God, let me go back. Uh, and this one, uh, this was a movie called The Inland Sea, Ooh. the Voyager release. Um, but when you put it on, it, you know, it's Voyager and everything, whatever, Janus Films. When you put it on, you only see a Criterion, um, you know, intro, which I thought was interesting. And this has been put out as Blu-ray re uh, pretty recently. Uh, a blu-ray release which no one talks about I, I haven't seen anybody talk about it on the criterion page but it's basically a documentary about a guy who went to japan and you know and then somebody else came back 20 years later um 
but when I put it on, it did remind me of home because they, they, I don't know if you guys, they played the sound of like it, the train. It's they, they play a, tra- a sound that says the train is leaving. Mm. And that's like a universe, you know, that, you know, this sound, Oh shit. I have to go catch this train. Get in the train. I was like, Oh, Oh, it was, anyway. it, it did remind me of home. You, you asshole, Benny. Thank you. for those things. <laughs> um, I picked up a new player recently um i'll talk about that in a little bit but the guy said you can pick two of these discs out of this box and there were a bunch of comments i didn't care about but just the two i picked up were you know the widescreen chinatown very nice cool. and then of course i picked i picked up the uh mm. the director's cut of das butt so i just want to maybe one day hopefully I'll it's not it. rotted yeah whatever it was, maybe it's yeah i, I would have gotten that too yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just a bunch of nothing. Like, uh, so sad. Uh, uh, the last thing I got was um, uh, I got the the box of mm-hmm. Citizen Kane, the Criterion. I have the slip. The slip is much cooler. You know, it's got cool artwork on the slip and everything. And this, I I had this before and I sold it because it's 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 a box. It's yeah, whatever. But the thing that sold me was Vinny. It was in my ear and said, oh, you need the box and the slip. What are you doing with your life right now? <laughs> like, fuck you guys. You're not silver complete if you don't have it. Yeah. But then I looked at the, the, the pictures of the selling point and it has, you know, you know, it has this uh, whatever, fill this out, my favorite types of films, whatever, whatever, and fill it out. And in the box is a <laughs> wow, pre-stamped. <laughs> pre-stamped yes the 20 cent stamp on there i was like oh fuck, fuck i gotta get that okay that's pretty cool well when you pay 120 dollars for the box you, you might as well get that 20 cent stamp back i didn't pay 120 no no, no. Oh, retail, retail, back in the day yeah oh yeah sure yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 the rich doctor who bought it first yeah yeah right sure yeah, yeah. and then died yeah uh that, that... <laughs> doctor I paid, death. I paid, yeah i paid too much for that bullshit but uh cool that's that's all i got i got much more um non lb stuff what do you got for a player or did you want to oh yeah later? it's just yeah. a so i was looking on marketplace and it was a uh it was a, like a it was a karaoke i think it's cld v 80 or something i, I don't know I'll with the shit ton of buttons and all that shit ton of buttons yep. it was one of my first players yep and I got it, and I, I had one before that was kind of working. Like, I had to break it open and fucking clean the lens, literally, because it wouldn't read the disc. Hmm. But this new player is just like, it works. Like, holy shit. Like, every, like I love it. Like, no problem. <laughs> the guy's friend died, okay, and he's selling it. Oh, okay, whatever. Give me your yeah. player. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm not, I'm not a tech guy. I just want a player that works. Uh well and you know every time i push play and you gotta you know put the walkie talk or get walkie squawky involved get yes. that uh microphone and do some... who is that the it's a parrot, parrot. yeah a parrot. Oh, yes and then i get my karaoke on <laughs> the best uh ldf posted it must have been a few weeks now but it's like my wife figured out the karaoke on my player like yeah. fuck my life or something yeah <laughs> <laughs> jesus that was pretty great uh, uh that's it. That's all right. really excellent pickups everybody all right, Ryan, what say you? Do we go into a viewer mailbag? Or? Yeah, we, we got to answer some mail. We, yeah, all right. We, yeah, we, we threw the net out. All right, so we got a couple. I'll, I'll jump in. We'll save a couple for next week, too. Uh, Cameron Scott wanted to know, what is the most prized laser disc in your collections? What's Ryan got? Uh, I would have to say Nuki. Oh, Nuki. Okay. Very interesting. <laughs> Anybody else have a prize yeah, place? Though, right? You, you didn't you watch it and you hated it? Oh, it's what? fucking god awful. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if I could get through it again. Like I made it all the way to the end. I feel like that's a lifetime achievement. <laughs> I, I don't know why they made it. I don't know. Who, like I get that the government put it out in like South Africa, but they shouldn't have. They should have just shut it down and been like, we there was a fire and we lost all the film elements. Like. 
Oh my God. <laughs> don't yeah. seek it out don't pay money for it well there's a side question that fuzz wanted to know is nuki really worth thousands of dollars so well, yes yeah yeah it is okay all right if you Got need it. a copy yes <laughs> i paid yeah i'm not even gonna get up and get my copy because <laughs> <laughs> that's Greg, that you have one. About that. oh my gosh nuki <laughs> has Three Always fifths of the world population of Nuki on Lexidisc. The there's, a, one, there's the fourth one in North Korea. There's a, there's a third side question: Who used the font first, Nuki or I Come in Peace? Um, which movie came out first? I don't know. I'd have to do research. <laughs> I thought you're the Nuki master. You're supposed to know this. I would assume that it's I Come in Peace. Yeah. Uh, Nuki was 1988. Yep. I Come in Peace was 1990, but it came out first on video. Oh, there's, <laughs> okay. there's a third Nuki. So um, right. it was probably I Come in Peace, and Nuki just needed some graphic art to yeah. fill space. I was going to bring out my Yanni Live at the Acropolis as my most prized LD, but that, it's over there, so it's just not happening. Sorry. Yeah. I saw it on VHS. I forgot to grab it for you, though. I know. That would have been sick. I could have been like Yanni Complete. I mean, maybe Betamax, maybe. I don't know. I think it's a little late for that. But yeah, I don't know. My, my go-to answer is always my Macross Memorial box. You know, it's not worth that much, but it's my favorite. So, And, and Nuki, of course. I'm My my copy's back there somewhere. My, got... Mine is always the uh, the Laserdisc uh, press pl Pressing Planet Tour. Nice. In Carson City? In Carson City, yes. Yes. The Go Preston Turtles. Career College. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you got an interesting one. What? What you got a oh. prize possession? Yeah, of course. Of course. It's not Nuki. I thought it's Nuki. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> you showed Nuki. <laughs> you showed Nuki though. Yeah. I'm just showing off. I'm just flexing, man. Oh, okay. All right. All right. What do you got? I so I have a cube full, like a full cube of discs that I'm like, why the fuck do I have it? Like just crazy discs, you know? It's it's yeah. prize possession. But of those, I think, I I don't know the ones I love. Not worth the most or whatever. But I yeah. love my bad taste. Like it's just I love this movie. Like Second this appearance. could be high school start it all it's like oh shit there's movies like this and so i love this and of course i love my no holds barred yeah. like it's nice yeah. hogan flex oh yeah did you take that off what? no it was hey. like this that's how it's it crazy <laughs> that's they weird just moved it because they didn't want to get rid of it but they like yeah. they also that's didn't funny. want it to to take away from this so they just put that's it on that's funny yeah because they had to censor it <laughs> <laughs> that's a trip that's so good. All right. Well, good. All right. Good choice. It's no Nuki, but whatever. Um, okay. All right. Here's here's an interesting one. I don't know if anybody like really collects these hardcore, but Jared Brown asked a pretty cool question is what's out there for best PAL exclusives or like exclusive cuts of movies where the Euro cut is better. There it is. Ah, there you go. Yeah, that's the one. There's no feebles over here, man. It's only PAL only, right? Yeah. Those dragon releases are nice. Yeah. If they're trying to release are weird, like some are NTSC yeah. and some are PAL, and yeah, and the same with the uh, the horror films, like all the you know Blade in the Dark and all that stuff. That's all NTSC too. So. Street Trash is only NTSC. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of I weird. Think Deadly Blessings is another PAL one. Mm. Only PAL. There, there's a few others, but yeah, yeah. I want to get um Seth's one there, the Terminal Man. I want to get that. Oh, yeah. Um, there's some weird ones where like only the letterboxed versions are available, like. My favorite movie, Legend, one of Luke's favorites, is uh, like it's letterboxed in like <laughs> France and the UK, maybe, but not over here. Uh, it's also four percent faster. So, what about I had uh, the thing? Like, uh, I think it's like a gold disc or something. Mm. I had that early on. I sold it because I don't have a player, but I heard that was a decent, you know, a decent version of it. I don't know. Yeah, there's that one company. Um, was it Encore or something like that? They came out with a few that had a bunch of extras, like um, uh, Jason the Argonauts, I think has like cool PAL test patterns and stuff on there and some like good, like exclusive extras. There's that. I like I like the Jurassic Park cover. Mm -hmm. I've never, you know, that's a great cover. That is a cool box. Yeah. yeah. I keep there's hearing a... tales of all these Arnold movies that are ex uh, uncut, like you're Running Man and like, you know, Total Recall. But then other people are saying they're not, that they're just the same cuts or they're, you know, that's a weird thing. Like so many censors, like you know, German videos are cut a lot of times. So it's Same hard to tell what you're going to get. Yeah, true. Good point. 
Um, there is the uncut just before dawn. Uh, hmm. It was put out right before like they started cutting all the films in the UK. So I think uh, Bill had a Inferno copy that I think he said was better than I don't know all the rest. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's the German one, hmm. if I remember correctly, because the UK yeah, one, maybe. Was, or or it was the U- UK pan and scan, and then they came out with a letterbox that was cut. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. I want to get the Evil Dead stuff just because, like, for some reason, the skulls are all blue and they're called Tonster Teufel. So I want to get some Tonster Teufel discs. So. What about the uh, Holy Virgin versus the Evil Dead? Is that a uh, <laughs> is that an official PAL release only that I can no. get? Yeah. No, yeah. But it is an Evil Dead. You don't have. Good point. I know. I have Return of the Evil Dead. Yeah. I need some Holy Virgin versus the Evil Dead. Cool. You so there you go, Jared. Uh, Trevor Noble wants to know who bumped this. It was Luke. What fuck is Trevor Noble? Uh, some noob. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking noob. Yeah, noob. Speaking of Trevor, he let us yeah. know during the show that New Jack died of a heart attack. Oh, no. Yeah, right? Like, crazy. So I'm spilling a 40. And uh, Svein also wanted to know, uh, which LD box set that you bought has been the most disappointing and why? I think we answered this one, but Cronenberg. The Cronenberg box is Ooh, just... Yeah. They're shit transfers. It's this 90s release yep. from Japan. Shit transfers. Like mm. it's not the best movies either. Not, I mean the brood is yeah. great. It's whatever. The brood. I don't know. Yeah. Dead zone. I like the brood. Scanners. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not like Dead great zone, versions. Scanners. They're just yeah, they're shitty, bad. They didn't upgrade the transfers at all. Yeah. Mine is uh, my go-to is always Pulp Fiction, just because I love the Criterion box, but I also kind of hate the Criterion box because it was just like Criterion let Quentin do whatever he wanted, and it's like the same extras that have been ported onto DVD and Blu-ray, and it's like there's no commentary track, and yeah, they have the, like weird side breaks, and screw that box. Mm. Also, it's essential you should have it, but screw it. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a complete loser if you don't have it, but <laughs> but fuck that box. <laughs> just get the BTS yeah i always like this thing he's like well there's no need for a commentary track because there's an interview with me and elvis mitchell or no it's like him on um uh pbs like yeah like an hour-long interview where he talks about pulp fiction for like five minutes i'm like (laughs) how is that a replacement for a commentary track screw you man anyways so uh do you want any more questions or want to save the rest for the next episode oh wait i didn't i didn't answer i didn't oh wait uh, bad box so I think a lot of the Japanese TV box sets are just mm-hmm. like, come on, it's too big. DVD won out for a reason. Uh, the the Star Trek box set, they're just huge. Like you have every, come on, no, I can't move those around. X-Files for days, baby. I have every X-Files <laughs> episode and it's just, I have it, I bought it for my wife and my wife is like, I'm not messing with those. <laughs> yeah. You need them though. Yeah. It's like the Pulp Fiction box, man. You need it. <laughs> I'd like the question about the oddity discs because I brought some. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, let's move on then. Jason Floyd wants to know, what's your favorite oddball, goofy, or just plain weird LD? <laughs> of course. All right. Ooh, video tax guy, 1987. Well, taxes, you got It's so specific. Kind of specific, yeah. It's so specific. Like, why is this real? I love it. How many did they what make? Touche Ross. What is that? This is an April essential watch. Um, May, May, May 17th this year. <laughs> That's pretty good. I this, like that. This is hilarious. And then I also brought the next one. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Does it cover cryptocurrency? I mean, it's 87. 87, so yeah. Okay. So, so of yep. course, yeah. Yeah, doggy <laughs> coin is in there. Sure. Yeah, swatch coin. Doge coin. <laughs> and then of course, the Lamaze oh, method. Yeah, because everyone needs the Lamaze method. Like, that is what? great. Another one that's just like, why did they make that? And um, yeah, it's very odd. I don't like it. Everyone's focusing except for that one woman is just staring right at the camera. She's just like, "Hey, I'm about to tell you how to yeah. do the technique." Nice. <laughs> but yes, there are many, many more. This could be its own top five, guys. I am. Yeah, we should probably do that. Like oddball. <laughs> I don't have that much weird stuff. I mean, I guess my favorite is Motor Fantasy. 
just because it's all about cars except there's random nudity that shows yeah. up so oh yeah motor fantasy yeah, yeah. that's totally on board yeah the so other that, one i considered i have these ones that are from like uh merle norman that are like skincare <laughs> routine that like are damn they're like from a, the company for the people like showing them how to sell products so those are pretty good. <laughs> I do like the old Disco Vision title, Touch of Love Massage, oh, yes. with the oh, big red good. lettering, for adults only. <laughs> Probably like the first yep. laser disc porno. Oh, Can't yeah. sell that on eBay, yeah. smut peddler. <laughs> Killing me. Smutty over here. Uh, all right, well, this is just crush these. We're almost done, actually, so let's power through these suckers. Uh, our good friend Spencer wants to know, what is your current viewing setup like? Ooh. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what do, you do there, Ryan? It's a uh, 99 S video into DVD OI Scan Duo. Okay. Do it HD TV. I never see much like Ryan gear shots. So it's always a mystery what well, you're doing. I've, I've got an S2 and an X9, and they just raw dog right into a TV. <laughs> nice. And it still looks great. So, mm -hmm. hey, whatever. It just depends on what room I'm in. Yeah, okay, cool. Max, you got some new setup stuff going on. What's your, I know you said I had a picture last episode, but. Yes. Yeah, so um, my, my tower of power basically is currently the W1, uh, the R7G and the uh, DVL91. Mm. And uh, everything's going to iScan HD plus. And uh, I have the little Extron boxes for little comb filter guys. Hell yeah. The W1 for sure. Cool. The R7G is going straight S video. S video, yeah. Um, the DVL, I've I've kind of gone off and on with the X John box just yeah. to see what it's like, but pretty much everything's going S video. Cool. Um, and then I got that big ass TV for freaking cheap, because uh, who wants digital projector TV that's that big? Yeah. <laughs> <Me. laughs> so hell yeah. Everything's HDMI into that. Nice. What are you rocking, Luke? I'm straight raw dogging, baby. I'm straight going laser disc TV. That's it. You got a new I, TV or CRT or no? I I just yeah the old flat screen. I have an old Sony yep. flat screen smart TV, and I I have no issues. I'm fine with it. Like nice. it, it looks fine to me. Like right. yeah. So that's it. That's right. I got the Quasar raw dogging into that 4K TV behind me. In the other bedroom, I got an LDS one raw dogging into a Samsung panel. And then, uh, yeah, in the main room, I got um, the SXRD projector, you know, with the eval board and uh, the DVDO uh, edge green. And uh, also, you know, what the R7G, got to have an R7G, got that S video going out of that. I got the Sony C2EX Muse player. That's the main, that thing, I pretty much use that every single day. And um, what's the third one? Oh, the PAL player that Seth sent me. All going into an Extron switcher box, so I can like kind of go between all three of them, move around, and uh, if I want to watch a PAL movie, I can uh, fire up Seth's old player. So, right. uh, yeah, that's about it. So, all right. Uh, next question is Jeremy wanted to know uh, what did the Wolfpack watch for Mother's Day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Mom. You watch Mom. Nice. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what's Who's in that? <laughs> Is anybody in that? <laughs> Let's see. Art Evans. <laughs> A bunch of people you've not heard of. <laughs> nice. It's an epic. And I was RCA. trying to... Who was that? Epic RCA. Oh, RCA. Yeah. It's a little hard to read who's in it, but it's crazy looking. Is, it, is that a trauma movie or no? Nope. Uh, it's trauma adjacent, but you mm. know. It's You're thinking of Mother's Day. Anymore. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I was trying to think of what I watched. I think I just watched the HK movie on Mother's Day proper, but I can't remember which one. I watched Black Mask, so. It might have been Swordsman. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the best movie to watch on Mother's? I mean, Psycho is the first thing that comes to my mind. Like, well, it's high quality. Well, yep. I mean, the yeah. trauma Mother's Day, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what else is out there for good mom movies? Uh, Mommy Dearest, is that on Laserdisc? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Watch those. All right. Yeah. And uh, all right, we uh, we talked about Nuki. Uh, Yorma wants to know how many discs in your collection have you not watched? A lot of them. Yeah. 
Zero. I've watched yeah. every disc multiple times. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ryan's got to be pretty. Uh, you got to have a good percentage, right? I I think I'm at 25 percent watched now, or close to it. All right, that's not bad. I calculated how many more years it's going to take, and it's depressing. But well, I mean, when you collect lots, it's like back in the day when I collected, I, I saw every single disc I bought. But now, when you get, it's kind of cool to have a bunch of stuff on your shelf that you haven't seen before. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah makes it look more interesting. Yeah, exactly. So I, I kind of don't want to see them all really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like it's nice to know that I have a hundred movies to choose from, right there. Or yeah. There or there. And yeah, three years from now, you're gonna watch some like freaking, I don't know, Aaron Norris movie you forgot about, and you'll be like, "This is great for me to poop on." <laughs> whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, minus the last part. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, oh, and then uh, the final thing, I'll probably save this for Peter because he's going to want to poop on it, was uh, any thoughts on the Retro Tank 5X? So, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not I, made for LD. I know. It's why I feel bad because Mike Chi, the guy who like created that, seems like a nice guy and put a lot of effort into it for a retro gaming device. Yeah, It's designed for you know 240p and like classic gaming and yeah. You know, so if you're worried about your PS2, maybe, you know, get it, but yeah. Or your NES or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's all, um, it's all done like kind of uh, with FPGA, I think. It's all like just programming it to it's, pretend like it's doing all this stuff instead of like a real actual chip, you know, like that you would get in a Lumagen or something like that. So yeah, we'll probably bring that up next time because we're going to be talking just saying, Peter might join us again. We might be talking some more Mad VR and crazy stuff like that. So, yeah. Sweet. Let's do some hot topics. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. All right. Hot topics. There's been some cool stuff going on lately. Um, one thing, Nuki Mania, uh, in case you haven't heard, Nuki's taking the world by storm. It's you know one of the biggest uh, price discs in the world right now. Mm -hmm. um, nobody's confused by that. Everybody seems to understand why. High quality. Uh, it's high quality, yeah. I, I uh, hope that somebody posts uh, about it soon again and its price because it's been like a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go, Nuki Mania. Uh, Ryan just brought a new element uh, to my attention today uh, from a, a gentleman who uh, discovered that other people sometimes want to list the actual value of an item. If you're shipping internationally and you have to do a customs form, one um, one asked, "Hey, can you say this? Uh, you know, kind of rare disc is worth seven dollars." Uh, the seller will say, uh, no, I'm going to say what it's worth. And uh, that may, you know, kind of create some fees for you, depending on what country you live in. Uh, but yeah, it seemed that a hundred percent of the comments seem to be on the side of the seller in this case and not on the side of the victim uh, purchaser. So this might be the first time I've seen a thread where everyone backed up a seller and went, what's it like? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, it was pretty impressive. Just for a reason. Don't try and defraud it unless you're friends with the person you're sending it to. And even then, you can't insure it. So, yeah. So, that so was pretty I good. saw that thread too. Like, how much money are we talking about? Do you think? Like, how much extra money? Because it was all in pounds or whatever. Yeah, I think I think he gave a final bucks. tally. Yeah, it was like thirty dollars or something. Actually, yeah, yeah. Which I mean, I, mean, I definitely mean, it's it's like a uh, I definitely side with the seller. I, it's, it, it was a weird question in the first place. Like, yeah. oh, would, would I give them bad feedback? Blah, blah, blah. No. Yeah. no. This should be a side conversation, a, hey, are you cool? Or, Let's be cool kind of thing. And if not, then you're fucked. Yeah. yeah. Or don't buy it. I'm not fucked, but whatever. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> That'll teach uh -huh. you to get the big Lebowski. Yeah. yeah. It, or you, and the, the bottom line is like, you just eat it, man. You want to, you want a laser disc of Big Lebowski, then you're just going to have to pay for it. Like, uh, yeah. That was kind of the general consensus. Yeah. Like, yeah. Freaking pony out. I mean, Speaking of uh, oh, taxes on Nuki. Man. Yeah. Once they see that worth the value. Oh my God. So I was reading something about these eBay listings, about the, these inflated eBay listing on the underneath, I think. And someone posted like, oh, well, people do it just to keep things like keep things going on their eBay. I heard that, too, because yeah. everyone said it was uh, you know, money laundering. And someone's like, no, it's not money laundering. Yeah. It's to keep it alive so you can right. avoid some fees or something for relisting. Yeah. Or I don't It know. doesn't make sense. What, there's no fees for relisting. It just keeps going, right? Yeah. It, I guess it's like you sell out and you need to restock. Yeah. Right? If you're at a subscription level, you're at that level. You're mm -hmm. paying for it. 
you don't give like get free or yeah. like no they probably have never so, uh, let's say okay it's money laundering how would that even work no one's actually <laughs> gonna buy that it just sounds like a cool or thing for someone to yourself? say like yeah you're, I don't you're, know. yeah you you list something for five thousand dollars and you buy it yourself with that five thousand dirty money that's how money that's money. yeah i've only no. money laundering from office space i don't know how that works. but yeah i, I I think yeah. they're doing it for certain things, supposedly like the Black Diamond Disney movies that you see that sell yeah. for the stupid prices. I mm-hmm. think that that might legitimately be it, but you know who knows? Because yeah, the, the way they were trying to kind of promote it was is it's if you stock like multiple copies of something. So if you had five and then it's out of stock, you just bump up the price to fifteen thousand dollars while you get more stock, but. That doesn't line up. Well, yeah, because all this stuff is unique items, really. Like a lot yeah. of these are, yeah, you know, one of a kind, yeah, you know, laser discs and yeah, whatever. Well, they're not always in the same condition. It's not like you're going to get a whole stack of twenty new ones in again, like Rat. Yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. Know? yeah. That yeah, lightning doesn't strike twice. Uh, I, speaking of eBay, I heard our good friend Smutty can't smell sell porn on eBay anymore. <laughs> is that true, Ryan? Yeah. Is that true, I, Smutty? <laughs> I hear that you can't do it. Uh, I've seen okay. it pop up in DVD forums and VHS places. And hmm. Facebook's going to be the smut peddler down. I mean, Laser yep. forever. There's a couple good sellers there, I hear. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Maxine with their box of porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I got just, a shelf of it, you know. What do you do? <laughs> just go down to the Dollar Tree and uh, you know, put out a call. She'll meet you there. So, so uh, yeah, okay. So I, I was in the record store the other day and I looked through their, their crate that I've looked through a million times and then there happened to be two porn desks. And for me, when I'm looking for stuff, anything interesting, I'm going to get like remotely interesting and porn is porn. on that list. Like okay. it's different. It's interesting. And I, I usually sells pretty quick and, and I sold, I sold it within a day. Like that's not bad at all. Um, but yeah, now, oh, now I can't, I hate having it. Like I hate yeah. it in the house. It feels weird. You're gonna have to go into the new auction group. Has anybody uh, taken part of the new auction group that's been mm-hmm. making the rounds? Yeah, I, I, think I, I think I won tonight. Yeah. What do you get? Uh, you want to tell us later? We'll, we'll find out. Okay. It's, All right. It's, it's a secret. secret. And then I believe Vinny sold something. So. I think he sold the keep, but he said he could have sold the keep to the guy who bought it anywhere. Yeah, you know, just regularly, probably. But yeah. I mean, the price he got was good. Like I, I it was good. Put the yeah. back down for it. I'm like. That's good. Like that's actually, yeah. better, better than eBay. It's way more than I paid for the keep. So yeah, good yeah. for him. Um, speaking of high prices, uh, this kind of gets into a couple things. But the Crimson Rivers, uh, very very late release, uh, went for quite a bit of money. Not, I guess, not as much as the previous time. It didn't crack like what three grand this time. But uh, but it also pissed off a bunch of people because uh, they were posting uh, live that live auction in LDF. Can't post live auctions. Yeah, no. it's actually legitimately in the in the rules that you're supposed to read. So yep. it didn't go over too well. Yeah. yeah. Plus, like, simple fact is, like, you weren't going to bid on it anyways. Talk about it after it finishes if you want. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, just keep scrolling. Yeah. You can post about the buy it now price of Nuki if you want. Yes. It's kind of high right now. Which also leads into there's this guy who super is super angry all the time about people who post like outrageous auctions because yeah obviously that happens all the time like look at this guy wants two thousand dollars for this so that's also in the rules by the way yeah so there you go I mean I guess it's it's a dead media it's a dead format we don't have that much to talk about so eventually somebody's gonna have to be like hey look somebody wants four thousand dollars for this disc <laughs> it's wacky yeah and then everyone has to be like oh my god <laughs> well there was a Nemo video posting it'd been been like yeah. or two so yeah I had to reset uh Trevor told me to reset the clock there's been I forgot how many like five days since the last Nemo incident. I need to make an actual graphic of that and uh, a regular show or whatever the hell, whoever Can did that last. Can we talk about the sandwich and Nimoy, the Nimoy sandwich? That was great. The, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the guy who was like a craft services dude ended up becoming like Nimoy's best friend for a day and walked hand in hand on the beach with him, sharing just like tender moments. He made him a sandwich. <laughs> and they talked about Shatner sucking, like basically. <laughs> that was pretty yeah. good. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes you get gold out of those posts. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, also, uh, I noticed our uh, buddy Ethan Gallo there has LDS9 and LDX9 grip rings uh, in his little uh, kind of flotilla of like custom made Laserdisc repair items. So 
look for that. And um, speaking of Vinny, he got his laser land case. So that was cool. Yes. Like, so cool. Like the place he, yeah, he like legit managed that place back in the day. I always love how Vinny's got this like secret cool past of like, I'm pretty sure he was like a, you know, he says he was a DJ, but I'm sure he was like a superstar DJ in like some country that we don't know about. <laughs> but yeah, he was like running this place that did like HT in- installs and badass stuff. And yeah, he has this cool like laser land case. I'll get a photo of it from him. And uh, he also started a laser disc player census, which I'm not sure what he's trying to do. If he's trying to take our players or what the deal is here. But he said uh, it, it generates good conversation. But I think he's trying, trying to weed out the people that have zero players. <laughs> kick, him, kick him out of the group. So, um, And what else? Oh, Hayden had a killer uh, King Kong shit post this week. Yep, oh, that was great. Which, uh, yeah. Surprisingly, uh, fooled a lot of people that are, are kind of like they've been in the group for a while, they should probably know better. But unless they were like epic, like trolling him back, it was like shit post upon shit post. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know. Yeah, it seemed but did Shout Factory actually release a King Kong box set or something? Shout I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think no, no, did they really <laughs> make a, a Blu ray release? Yeah, I think there's a new Blu ray with the TV cut and all that stuff. So, yeah, so he just laser discified it. Yeah, and everybody fell for it. Who was the old one? He he did the uh, oh Dune box set, right? The, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> good uh, stuff. Gerdowski Dune. Yeah, you know, yep. good. I think that's about it for hot topics. You got anything else, Ryan? Nope, that was it. All right, cool. We, we crushed it. Let's kick ass. Let's get physical, everybody. With Nuki or <laughs> with Nuki? Ah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm in the process of moving. So I didn't actually buy anything new, but uh, I've been packing. So I've been going through stuff. So I'm just going to show some cool HK stuff that's not laser disc. I happened to trip across while I was uh, you know, getting ready to, to move, including a couple books. Um, Thomas Weiser's Asian Cult Cinema. It's a fun book. It's uh, the same you know group that did uh, Asian Trash Cinema back in the day. Uh, it's called Asian Cult Cinema, but this book is entirely HK. Uh, this is the guy that, yeah. You know, a lot of people kind of had a love hate relationship with because he was like just totally shitting on some movies. So it's it's either the best movie you've ever seen or it's a total piece of shit, even though it's like really entertaining. Like, let's see what he gives New Legend to Shaolin. Yeah, so I think he, I think he takes a dump on it. Hold on, let's see what he gives it. A Naked Killer Two, eh, New Legend Shaolin got two and a half stars. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Last movie. Yeah. Yeah, he trashed it. But the cool thing is it's got all the stuff that like we were talking about. Then in the middle of it, it does um it's got oh, it's all blown out, but it's got the roots martial arts. It talks about all the you know the classic Shaw Brothers films in the 70s stuff. So it's cool. got a bit of everything. And uh, I got another book uh, called Hong Kong Babylon, which is kind of blown out here. Uh, another nice one, but it's got a lot of good interviews with the actors and and the filmmakers uh, in here as well. So it's got a lot of that same stuff where it goes through like each film and gives you a little bit of a synopsis, but it's really cool stuff. It's got, you know, interviews with John Woo and Chow Yun Fat and everything, of course, Michelle Yeoh. And um, yeah, I just found a bunch of, you know, DVDs and stuff like that of, uh, you know, 8 million copies of The Killer, but yeah, Duel to the Death. Highly recommend that movie. You should get that. And um, what was the, uh, Luke was talking about. Of course, you got to get some uh, Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I think I imported this from Hong Kong back in the day because it wasn't available here in the States yet. Damn. But um, freaking, um, where's that damn, uh, yeah, the Bruce Lee one. Uh, I think this is on a couple different things, but the Bruce Lee Warriors Journey has all that footage from Game of Death that wow. the original version of the movie that he was trying to make, which was going to be pretty cool. It was going to be like a, it had George Lazenby from Honor Majesty Secret Service in it, and they were basically going to climb a pagoda, and each level of the pagoda would have a master of a different form, and then eventually Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is in the top, and he's like the the master of no form. And oh. um, So it's got all the, the kind of cool test footage and, and stuff that they did shoot, and you know, it's got some documentary stuff on it, so I highly recommend checking that out. And um, found, I found an Aces Go Places DVD I forgot I had, so... Oh. recommend recommend that really good super goofy comedy and um what was the damn uh luke was mentioning 
you're uh, into Stephen Chow, you should definitely oh, yeah. God, check out Kung Fu Hustle. It's just uh, amazing. Dude, and my absolute favorite Stephen Chow movie, Shell and Soccer. Oh, yeah. And this is a sick Korean, like, triple set. It's got, like, three different cuts of the movie. It's got DTS. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, I love this box. I think it's the Ultimate Edition or something like that. So, yeah, those two are essential, like, post- HK switch over. Um, yeah, I got, you know, Jet Li Fearless. I was, I think that's a Hong Kong import. Uh, a couple of copies of Hero. I was just like importing discs for days back in the day. I think this is like a mainland China version of Hero. Um, yeah, love it. So, yeah, got some DVDs there. And finally, uh, let me drop these down. Oh, and yeah, you got to get the, the freaking Jackie Chan Police Story 1 and 2 Criterion Ooh, as well. Oh, look at that. That's a really nice set. Sweet. Um, bam. Where is... Here we go. Shout out to Spencer. He actually got me to fire this up. Uh, PlayStation 3 game called Stranglehold, which is technically the sequel to Hard Boiled. Uh, it's got Chowing a Fat as Tequila, and it's got a whole new story with, you know, like a kidnapping and kind of going out and taking on the, the triads. And the basically the, the concept of the game is just what wouldn't it be cool if you lived in a John Woo movie? And so you can interact with everything in the environment, kick off walls. There's carts everywhere for you to roll on while shooting multiple bullets. And there's like this cool system where you can enter in tequila mode where pretty much everything's in, in slow motion and, you can like dodge bullets and like you can uh, like point out the exact part of a body you want to hit. So you can like shoot a guy in the nuts from across the street and he you know, reacts <laughs> just right. It is completely insane. Uh, it got a lot of kind of mixed reviews at the time, but I mean, you're chowing and fat, like killing everybody in the room in the most stylish way possible. Uh, it's got a lot of great levels and it's fun stuff. There's like a special limited edition that comes with a Blu-ray of hard boiled that looks like ass, but um, this is, I got the cheap boy version, but I think Spencer was saying uh, you can't find it anymore, like for cheap anyways, but that's my rec recommendations. Get a, get a copy of stranglehold and pretend you're chowing on fat for two hours. Yeah. So sorry. I didn't buy any new stuff, but uh, I haven't been, I haven't been shopping cause I'm shut off. You got Ryan I'm shut in. I'm shut in. All right, so uh, I, I did buy some new stuff. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, this was a Dollar Tree find. Wow. Uh, I got that in the stack, too. Yeah, I, I hear that this one's not the greatest quality, but it was a dollar, and it's the killer. I mean, yeah. I have so many copies of the killer in here. <laughs> Why would you pass that up? I know, right? I got a film called OSS 117. Which oh, is Blu ray. Look at you. Blu ray. Uh, French uh, spy film. For no reason. <laughs> yeah, definitely not playing it. Yep. Uh, I hit up the Massacre video store and I got oh. Toxic Zombies, which looks amazing. Look at that. Uh, Final Step. Wow. Another amazing looking film. Cool. And Enter the Devil because I, I was going to buy one thing and I'm like, well, if I you know spend and buy two more, I get free shipping, which is totally worth it. So I did. <laughs> Look at that cover. Yeah, I mean, and these are all limited editions with yeah. uh, slip covers, and Ooh. once they're gone, they're gone. So you kind of have to. Yep. eBay Gold. Uh, shout out to Luke for holding yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Video. This is number one ninety four of three hundred, and it's a Blu ray. Oh, yeah. So, so and, I, I'm I'm totally addicted to these guys. Yeah, Orange Gold Gold Ninja is a Canadian guy. He's doing his own. He's making it out of his home. It's what we should be doing if we were on our shit, but <laughs> like. He he does his own commentary tracks. It's amazing. I love that. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Jackie this... Chan, like a fake Jackie Chan box set soon of like all fake Jackie Chan movies. Nice. Is uh is this uh the uncut version as well? Do you know? I think it is. Yes, it is. It is the booby version. But he talks about the other other one. Booby version. Good. Good. <laughs> um, I didn't have this, so uh, huh. I used that uh, place that gives you free two day shipping. Uh, I've heard of that. Yeah, did Max have that last week? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we were talking about it. I'm like, yeah. I, I need that. And yeah, you so do. I'll go to twodayshipping.com and check that out. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, I got a really sweet movie. Oh, hell yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so wow. that was Heavy Trip is the yep. US. So this is uh this is subtitled, but it's a uh, it's about heavy metal. So yep. really looking forward to it. It's on a partner label from Vinegar Syndrome. Shout yeah, out. I heard a lot about that one. Yeah, it looks hilarious, so it can't be bad. Um, and then a couple more from uh, our friends at Vinegar Syndrome. We got the VSA for Grave Secrets. Ooh. I love these boxes. Like, they're just beautiful design. So Ooh. if you're a fan of the film, check it yeah. out. Yeah. Cool. Uh, All American Murder. Ooh. Really sweet slipcover. Wow. Looked like Christopher Walken on the front there. Yeah. It's like fake walking. I think it might actually, it is. It is Christopher Whoa. Wow. So I haven't cool seen dog. this. But... That's amazing. That's real walking. <laughs> And uh, the seller. Cool. Nice. There Not to be confused with seller dweller. Yeah, different. Yeah. And then this is their first box set of homegrown horrors. So uh, these are uh, really cool slip top box. And uh, it's got Winter Beast. Wow. Beyond Dream Store. And. Fatal exam, and I believe one of these is uh, trying to find it. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Of course, I can't find it now, but I believe one of them has uh, a young Frodo on it. Nice. <gasps> oh, yep. young Frodo. Yeah. Oh yeah, Elijah. baby Frodo. Yes, and then uh, I had some vinyl. All I, right. I I went to a thrift store which I really don't do much because COVID and everything. Mm -hmm. And I did find a couple of uh, gems and everything was two for a dollar. So Ooh, Jesus, uh, I, I cleaned up. So I'll show, I'll show just a couple highlights. Yeah. Heard of these guys. So yeah. That's obscure, man. I don't know. Yeah. They, uh, they did more than one album, I guess. Wow. wow. How did that happen? It's not yeah. like anybody knew them. I don't know. Wow. And I've never heard of these. Yeah, the old two for a dollar. Oh man, yeah, that's that's a cheap disc. Yeah, the the yeah. guy's on fire, so it looked cool. I, <laughs> yep. I don't know. It doesn't even have the band name on the cover, so yeah, I'd probably pay twenty five cents. Maybe I don't know. I, I might have overpaid, but yeah, you might have. Yeah, the vinyl in them are immaculate, so like wow. you do less or better. So. Yeah, that would yeah maybe five dollars at the most yeah. in the open market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, a band that was popular once upon a time uh, came out with a new or a re release. Oh wow! wow. So, uh, I've never yeah. seen that on vinyl before. <laughs> it, it, this is the first time on vinyl. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, and I have a problem, so I got all of the variants. <laughs> wow! Uh, because I'm... Yeah. yeah. How many variants do you have? There were, there were three variants. Jesus. So, wow. I, I love it. Yeah. It, it's. I, I haven't even listened yet, but it can't. That's be a bad. trip. And then uh, this band, uh, Weezer, came out with Van Weezer. Nice. And the wow. indie vinyl is peak. So Ooh. really, really so cool. are they are they are they playing Van Halen songs? What, what is they're not playing Van Halen, but they're playing heavier. And it's actually I liked this better than their last one. So all right. Okay. So yeah, check it out. Uh shout out to Culture Shock and Rock Road too. So. Oh cool packaging. Yeah, yeah, it looks looks great. Indie exclusive pink vinyl, you can't go wrong. Like it's the way it should be. Nice. All right, Maxine, what do you got? I got some records. Yay! I'm buying records again, guys. Terrible influence. It's our, yeah, we're bad influences. I got this one. Ooh, Sound what the hell? Odyssey. Ah, freaking realistic. Sick. Rock to disc. That's a Radio Shack's brand. It's red. Damn. Which looked really cool. Wow. But um, yeah, dynamic technique and high fidelity stereo. It has. Star Wars. It has all these theme songs on it. It's got the nice. Rocky uh, SWAT shaft. I mean, it's some killer heads here. That's good for a party. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Keeper of the Seven Keys? Yeah. Oh, sick. Which freaking was, you know, similar price point to Ryan. So. That looks like an OG, like, original pressing, too. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Nice. Oh damn! Never heard of this. This was from the you know, take take it from the. This was the freebie when you buy buy one get one free pile. So sweet, promo so, stamp. Yeah, it's a promo stamp. But you know these guys, 
look like they're going to bring the heat. Oh, man. Yeah. I should have a guy in the middle. Right? <laughs> this one right here. They definitely <laughs> have day jobs. <laughs> and then I got that milkman. Oh, nice. And it just kind of looks like it's kind of maybe a dance club version. Yeah, it looks something. like a 12-inch, yeah. And then this one. Woo! Hell yeah, yeah, baby. I couldn't believe this. Freaking this hell yeah. So cool. Oh, just the fact that it is real. I thought it was the the laser disc at first, and I was like, damn, it's the soundtrack. That's almost even cooler though. Yeah, you gotta buy that. Like never when do you see this soundtrack? It's so weird. It's exactly like the laser disc. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then I got a sticker. What? Hell yeah. It was uh it's a person on um the 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 flea bay they're press printing new stickers oh cool it's nice. a new sticker i'm gonna put it on my car so everyone can know my love of chud <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> represent the chud on the road uh, like it so damn that's on my yeah that's on my little non- that's a pretty sick haul thank you yeah what do you get luke <laughs> okay uh so my my uh my thrift store there's a thrift store on base and they've got some new discs and I was pretty excited about that. The first one I got is the season one of Batman 66. Nice. I have the uh, the Blu-ray, but I saw this. I'm like, oh, I got to get this. Yeah. I, I love Batman 66. It's just so great. Um, it's, it's like a five disc set in here. Oh, know. nice. Um, so I'm, I'm going, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. I'm going to go on the ship uh, to do my job for two weeks, maybe one, but probably two weeks. And I was like, the best thing about it is like, I have all the time in the world to watch movies. Like I'll, I'll work for a little bit and then I'll just go and watch movies. And I was like, I'm going to watch all the Fast and Furious movies. Like I'm just going to do it. And then I, I just started buying them uh, on the Fast and Furious one, which of course is just a, Incredible. it's a, it's a point on. break. What, what's the, what's the um, Patrick Swayze movie with the Keanu Reeves point break? Yeah, point break. Yeah. yeah, it's a point break rip off, yep. and it's you know they're yeah. whatever. Um, but then I skipped and I got a is this four right. Best what? Yeah, yeah, Tokyo that's four. Drift. It's the four one. Yeah, you got to get the Tokyo Drift. Where's Tokyo Drift? I, I skip, I'm skipping all that. I've seen. Oh, come on. See, I have seen them. I'm skipping forward a little, I, and I couldn't find them. I know that's the thing. I couldn't find them. All <laughs> all right. Do all you right. have a big lot? I. There's no big lots around me. Yeah, there's always a like one through eight box in, in or you know a big lot. With the individual yeah. releases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I watched this. It's 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 like a rehash of yep. you know it's like a back to basics kind of whatever. But it's I got yeah. the CG mine like the mine racing scene. Oh yeah, or, yeah. Or yeah. like when they're you know trying to go across the border there. <laughs> yeah, and they go on and they they know exactly where to drive. And yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, but I hear five through eight is, is where it gets really good. Like all these movies are just dumb, easy to watch, fun nonsense. And I'm, I'm all about that. So, uh, yeah, I, I also got five and I got six. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, that's all, all the ones I found. I also found, um, let's see what else. Yeah. I'm looking forward to watching fast. All right. All right. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I also found the uh, Blu-ray Do Right, Do right Thing, yeah. uh, 20th anniversary. It's like it was two bucks a book off. Got two two uh, commentaries from Spike Lee, I think. Nice. Yeah. Screw you, Criterion. <laughs> we don't Fuck need you, Criterion. Criterion. <laughs> um, also going underway. Going to leave. Uh, I bought a book. Let's ding the bell for the word. Um, nice list here. I got uh, Seth Rogen's book. Mm. It just came out called Your Book. And it's just stories about him and crazy thing that's ha- crazy things that's happened to him with famous people. I think I listened to a podcast. I think the reason I got it, he was on Conan, the podcast, and they, he had a funny story about Nicolas Cage or something. I was like, you know what? I'm going her way. I need a book. So I'll go, I'll go get this book. Um, and I like it because on the back, it's just like a, a blurb from his mom. Like, no, nothing else. <laughs> that's no, great. No bullshit blurbs. Um, let's see. Um, I listen, I, I, when I run, I listen to podcasts and I listened to a podcast with uh, John Waters and Mark Marin the other day. And I was like, 
you know what? I really like John Waters. Like, I may not like his movies, but like his world out view of li- like his punk ethic. Yeah. Like, I, I like all that. And so I was like, I'm getting all this shit. Like, fuck yes. it. I'm going for it. Uh, so I got Multiple Maniacs, the yes. Criterion Blu-ray. Um, this one I tried to watch and it's pretty rough. Like, it's pretty not, not you know, hard to watch or anything, but it's it's a movie made with his friends you know at his mom's house and you know it it was unpolished (laughs) unpolished is the word i'm looking for but he he calls it like a kind of almost like a godzilla movie Mm -hmm. at the end you know she uh, divine dies like you know after divine dies end of the movie like it's like a godzilla movie or something um next one female trouble nice best movie this is great this is the best if you're gonna watch a divine movie like this is the one to watch but holy shit uh this is this is i I love this movie i've seen it before um it's like uh i can't you know what's the it's just the story of divine uh don davenport wants the cha-cha heels you know for christmas you know i better get my cha-cha heels i better (laughs) she does not get cha-cha heels throws a christmas tree down and just you know leaves and then horrible things happen to divine um god it's a great movie and so it started me thinking about these hong kong movies too where it's like you know everyone says uh, john woo violence as poetry right mm-hmm. you know that was a big thing yeah. well john waters thing was like crime as glamour you know the same same kind of thing uh so i was like oh these are kind of connected um great great movie which is the movie where she's like licking everything in the house is that the one i was was trying to remember which movie it is yeah like licking the railings and everything and trying to get everyone sick yeah all right i'm not sure i'll have to look it up uh last this is so there's the only three criterion blu-rays they have and the polyester is the last one this was like the big budget movie it's got a real star in it he's you know what tab hunter he was in whatever and just uh, divine is a housewife and just everything bad happens to poor divine just just and this is the smell of vision one you know the yeah, yeah. Disc of it. um divine so he's john water says divine was not a cross-dresser it was like a the uniform like he yeah. he walked around as a guy he was not a transvestite like he, he which is whatever you know um it, it was just like his uniform for his job and he but he was such he played such a great female. Like it was, it was just so great and just such a believable one. And then Hairspray as well. Like uh, he plays Ricky Lake's mom. Um, yeah, it's a sad story too. Like he died like right before he was gonna be in Married with Children, you know? Like he had this role for Married with Children. He flew to LA like the day before he was gonna go in to do the line readings, he died. Like it was, that was it. You know, he was on his way for, to blow up. Um, Anyway, I, I like John Waters a lot. It just nice. Yeah. Uh, last two things I got, which um, my friend Tyler Bell made these VHS bootlegs. Uh, the first one is the the uh, the new Chucky movie, the new mm-hmm. Child's Play. Um, he made this before, and it's you got to look at it. It's got the skull like he. Oh yeah. I don't know what the fuck he does, but he put the skulls on them, and he he made this a while ago, and it was in four three. And I'm like, dude, I can't, I can't fucking watch this. Like it's, it's horrible. Like it's just, it's homemade for three. And he's so like, oh, doesn't even move. Yeah. Everyone, and that's a, that's the trend now. In these yeah, yeah. But it's just, it's unwatchable. And I showed him pictures. I'm like, I can't, no, it's bad. Yeah. He said, okay. And then months later, he's like, hey, I've got that. I've got a real swap for you. Just swap it. I'm like, oh, you remember that? Cool. And so he sent it to me and I swapped him out. And I actually watched the movie. Like I hadn't watched the movie before, but it, it it's a. I don't know if you guys watched it, but it's it's yeah. decent. Like it, yeah. yeah, it's it's one of the better. If I was a kid now and I watched this movie, I would enjoy that movie. Yeah. Uh, next one was uh, he the Rise of Star Rise of Skywalker VHS. Um, Old school CBS Fox look. Yeah, nice. like he makes them. You know, he makes bootlegs like they look like legit you know um i've made a few bootlegs and i'm like i want to make it look like a fucking bootleg but he it's his whole thing is like they're gonna look real oh what if yeah yeah 
That's cool. What if what if they came out right now? Yeah. This this is what they would look like. Yeah. Um, and there, I I I started getting into bootleg VHS is like right when he started, like right around the time he started making them. And so I've I've got everything you make. Like I just they are a novelty. Like they are like if I wanted to watch Rise of Skywalker, which oh god, why would I ever want to watch that movie? Um, I would not put the VHS on, but I like the fact that you can make a VHS uh, bootleg of it. If if you could make a VHS, if you could make a bootleg of Laserdisc, like I feel like, yeah, I would, um, but you can't do it. Um, anyway, they're they're fun. I buy a lot of them. I don't watch a lot of them, but I just it's just fun to have. Um, Brian, I'm talking to you, buddy. And, uh, <laughs> I I watch everything. I don't just oh no. <laughs> 25 percent. okay uh listen when you get four thousand discs in four years <laughs> that happens i did i did watch it i did watch i did put on rise of skywalker the other day and just have it in the background so now we need to get these dudes to like legit pan and scan to make those that's, four to three versions bullshit. that is that is <laughs> no, ridiculous no. that's not um, yeah uh, oh i got records i'm sorry i'm not done what show us some records yeah man a few records that i got there's a, the record store that I've got down the street that um, I, I play records at every Friday. Um, they get amazing stuff. Like they are, most record stores in town are, are new new records. Like they are 98% used. And yeah, they just, my, my local store is yeah. like that too. Yeah. You're they just don't want to deal with the new stuff. They're like, fuck it. You yeah. Know. But it's, it's, if you don't get them, like if you don't have people coming in with old collections, like, I don't know. Uh, the first one I got is this guy, uh, Fear of Music. Nice. It's nice. got the, the bumps on it. You know, it's the nice tread. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. This is a great album. Like, I didn't I didn't realize how great it was. There's not many. I think the biggest hit on here is the Heaven song, you know? Um, but other than that, it, so there's not, like, real whatever hits, but it's it's a great, it's a great record. Like, really fucking great. Um. Yeah, I got two more. Um, I'll show this one first. This is the Anthology of American Folk Music. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. came out in 1952. This is a reprint from like the 60s or 70s. This was a guy named Harry Smith. He, guy in the 50s, he put together all these old 78s um, from the 20s, and he made this anthology on Folkway Records. Nice. It is fucking amazing. Like it is, and then in the 90s late 90s they re-released them on cd and i got them and i just listened to the fuck out of them and i found that volume three which is this one was always my favorite it's songs and it's got like doc boggs it's got uh you know uh mississippi john hurt blind lemon jefferson like this is all uncle dave making these are the these are the hits like these are the best of the best and it is amazing i I've listened to this so much for most of my life and it was, I got found it. I'm like, yes, I will buy that. Uh, and it's got the, let's see, the cool, the cool inserts. Oh, damn. Volume one, two, and three, and this old, like from the fifties and just this cool, I mean, it, it talks about every song. There's notes on every song. That's awesome. Yeah, it, can... It's amazing music. Like, um, yeah. I can't say enough about that. Last thing I got was uh, this guy. I don't know if you've heard oh, of it. Oh, little Tim, Tim action. By the replacements, yeah. Nice. Original press. Like, they just, they said that somebody just brought in, like, all these, they said all these Nick Drake records and all these, like, oh. the, like it, are you they, killing me? And just like, hey, I'm I'm done with these. Here you go. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Um, I almost, I almost bought a Nick Drake record. It was, like, stupid expensive. It was on yeah. the wall, of course. Yeah. But. They said yeah, they had one for like two hundred dollars. I yeah. I, I, I went back a day later and it was gone, so it it yeah. saved me from myself. Yeah, yeah, it's always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a rule that if you go back and the record's still there, okay, yeah, I guess I got it. Then you got yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. Uh, cool. Uh, I think I've talked about everything. That's it. Right. Yeah. We good. I always forget to do the uh, the recommendation after the the non LD. Uh, kind of pickups thing so you st you have another recommendation ryan or uh the bag no i didn't really watch the thing that wasn't on laser disc so all right that's cool i guess i'll throw down another one i got um this uh bootleg 
of uh, Beach of the War Gods. If you've never seen Beach of the War Gods, find a copy. I think there might be some DVDs of it out there somewhere. But it's like um, Jimmy Wang Yu, I think, is is like pretty much like a Clint Eastwood rolling into a, a Chinese town with a badass. Like it's pretty much got like a good, the bad, and the ugly kind of score, but like with um, like more of an Eastern flair. And the the Japanese soldiers are just attacking everyone and fucking up this town. And uh, they just have this show uh, showdown on a beach, but they like go the night before and they like booby trap the hell out of it. So there's all these just sick kills and explosions and badass stuff. So yeah, old like 1971 Beach of the War Gods. Get it. I did watch this. It's oh, there you go. And there's a nice fighting sequence at the end. So win win. Dude. Maxine? Yeah, anything oh, else? Oh man, yeah. uh, I've been really just watching. Um, I'll I'll give a shout out to a YouTube person. Oh, cool! Watched. Yeah, they're called Bad Chad. Um, they I like it are already. a uh, car fo- uh, focused YouTube channel. He is one of the most like creative and interesting, um, like just what comes out of his brain, and then just the fact that he he's doesn't edit any of it it's all been live stuff and he basically started with the idea from a hot wheels car and he's building it in real life right now like oh cool like and he just he's just using whatever he's he's in canada he's in nova scotia canada nice. and basically using whatever trash or extra metal pieces just whatever he is laying around or whatever people will trade to him like it's he's just wild and he's crazy crazy talented like he Hmm. should be way way bigger like he had a discovery um channel show but they really kind of didn't do him justice like because it's all edited and they add in all the crap you know sure yeah gotta spice it up yeah yeah so you can really see like his insane level of like like the cars that he's building are like they could go to pebble beach like they're incredible so totally worth checking out what he's doing yeah been streaming anything special luke or any um, special recommendation that new so i really like this show called shrill with the uh, 80 bryant from oh she's great now she their first two seasons were great and then season three just came out i'm looking forward to seeing that is that hulu it, it, like it's it's a great show hmm. uh, yeah. nice about it yeah. cool uh, all right so final spins final thoughts i am going to um crush the John Woo movies I haven't seen. My next two spins are going to be uh, Heroes Shed No Tears and uh, Last Hurrah for Chivalry because I've never seen these damn things. So I'm going to go old school Woo. Uh, what about you, Ryan? I'm going to watch Nuki. <laughs> now, if someone didn't have a copy, is it available on eBay or something? Or? Uh, I hear that uh, for the right price it is. Uh, it just depends on how much you want to drop on it. Okay. But uh, otherwise, uh, I don't know what I'm going to watch. I think I might start out with like Apt Pupil or something. Hmm. I don't know. Oh. All right. Random. Ooh, what do you got there, Max? The setting, setting sun. sun. I I had heard good things about this, and then I was even more intrigued when I found a bunch of like letters, correspondence from a person in the '90s who was specifically looking to get the Setting Sun soundtrack CD because it's Ella's Ella's last, uh, Ella Fitzgerald's last singing, I guess. Really? In the soundtrack. And then instead of being able to find the CD, which is apparently very hard to find, this this correspondence says, I'm sending you this because it's on here. So this, I have no idea. It's got Diane Lane in it, but it's, it's like this kind of like Hong Kong kind of vibe. Interesting. Yeah. So really kind of interested and this was on, I looked it up to see if it was more action or more drama. And since it was more drama, I, I put it to the side. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so check that out. Action, but yeah, it looked cool. Hmm. Very interesting. What are you spinning next, Luke? Oh, Nuki. <laughs> yours looks Probably different. Well. Is yours like a Singapore version or something? No, it's the same. It's, it's uh. just got the, uh, the Singapore sticker on there. Yeah, well, that adds value, Singapore, I think, whatever. right? Oh, yeah. uh, at least a thousand dollars. I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> probably put it on uh, eBay for some John Waters. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Excellent. 
Well, uh, hopefully everybody had a good time hanging out and uh, delving into the world of HK and alien cinema with us. Uh, yeah. We'll and probably want to return to this sci-fi. at some point. What's that? And South African sci-fi. Oh, yes. I for- yeah. That's the best sci-fi. <laughs> if you like Battlestar Galactica, you'll love South African sci-fi. I've heard. Anyways, yeah. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll all uh, you know, save face. Maybe you know, give us face. Uh, make sure, yeah. Don't lose face. Yes. And uh, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. And Nuki. And Nuki. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>